Oh yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> like, is it working? Yes. Yay. Oh, is it me? Yes, it's you. Welcome to the Knitting a Good Yarn podcast. My name's Christmas Jackie. edition. Ooh. Holiday edition. Holiday edition. Festive edition. Well, sort of. There's not actually anything here that I have that's actually Christmas related or holiday related, but <laughs> it's that time of it's year. It's that time of year. Um, so I'm Jackie. I'm Carmen. And um, we're coming to you from Southern Ontario. And this is a knitting podcast in which we'll talk about our knitting, mm -hmm. the stories behind our knitting. Um, and today, I have a lot of finished objects. You do. And a lot of dream knitting. And I have three finished objects and a couple whips and maybe some dream knitting. We'll see. We'll see. Um, so we have learned over the past couple of episodes that um, I don't think it actually matters how much stuff we have <laughs> laid out in front of us. Apparently just two hours yeah. is you know the minimum amount of time that we can contain ourselves yes. to talk about wool so um whether you're gonna watch this marathon style all the way through or you're gonna do it in bits and bobs i just invite you to get comfy to yes. get a beverage maybe some knitting and thank you for spending your time with us yes amazing who should we start i would really like to start with you if that's well if you insist i do <laughs> I do. So I'm wearing my, I'm hoping this is coming. I am literally blending. Didn't really think about the fact that my <laughs> couch is about the same color, but anyway, and let's see if I can just come a little closer. This is my Fisherman's Raglan. I turned while I said that. Fisherman's Raglan from uh, Woodlands Knits, who's Liv Alvin. She's a designer out from Germany, and she's probably, I would say, one of my faves since I basically test knit every pattern that she has because I just love love her design so much um okay I don't feel like this is coming can you see it Jackie do you think that's actually coming it. through I almost think I should take it off and then show it but what this is it's a it's a basic raglan um but then has this beautiful detail <laughs> I'm hoping that's seeing you can see it's like a braid detail that comes all the way up here and it's a panel in the front and not on the sides or the back mm -hmm. so it's one of those sweaters where you have some interest things that are keeping you excited but it's not the whole thing so you get all of this break time and I don't know if anyone out there is like me I basic stockinette to me I don't know why I don't like it because <laughs> I love knitting we've had this discussion I mean what don't I like about going around and around because it's just the knit stitch. But sometimes I feel like it's just so much around and around. Mm. I don't know if it's like ADHD or something. I need something that's going to keep me, keep me a bit excited. So this kind of pattern is one where you, on every other row, you have something interesting to do. So you do this little stitch and it's not it's also not a very hard stitch but it's interesting enough so you're like oh good so you do that stitch but you only have to do it for part of the part of the round so then you're like oh and then I just break and then you get the next round is one of those like rounds that sort of um like rectify the, the first one you know like in a cable where you have oh, like, like it, it resolves, resolves the it. first the row before it yeah yeah so you then have a whole round of stockinette and then and then you get back into it and you're doing the fun thing so it's one of the like we've talked about these potato chip kind of sweaters like or knits because no matter where you end you want to do it again because you're <laughs> like well it's either like oh it's the fun round so we'll just do this one and get this one out but then you're finished that round and then you're like oh but it's the easy round <laughs> so i'm just gonna do the easy round because that's fun and then you get back and you're like, oh, but it's just one more fun. So that ha that was this sweater. And it was knit. Bottom up. So it's a bottom up construction. I want to put, I want to put some love out there for the bottom up construction. <laughs> I feel like for a long time, well, even now, like I think top down is like our thing. We feel like it's like the easiest kind of sweater. And I mean, on some levels, there's some great stuff about top down. Obviously you can try it on. The irony of me, which is probably not going to be surprising is that many times I don't even bother to try it on. <laughs> like why? Why? I, I don't. <laughs> I'm like, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I didn't even try this one on. 
I literally like, yeah, anyway. What I love about a bottom-up sweater construction is that, first of all, you're doing your sleeves on their own. So you're like, mm -hmm. you just take a sleeve somewhere if you want. Like, it's so easy to like go somewhere that, you know, like when you've done a top Hard down, down, yeah, like you, a top down sweater, you usually typically you start here. And by the time you're doing your sleeves, your entire body's done. So you're flipping and flip, like you're going around and you're circum like, you know, the small circumference, but you're having to flip your whole sweater. This, I don't think I'm convincing Jackie so far, but... <laughs> This is fun. So you're like, just a sleeve here. That's quick. Just get that yeah. done. Oh, just another sleeve. And you're done. Then your sleeves. Right? Yeah. That's nice. Did you use a sleeve as a gauge swatch or did you gauge swatch? I. You, you tested this, right? I did <laughs> test it. <laughs> yes. And I did make sure the gauge was good. Well, okay. I'm flipping ahead. I can't actually remember, Jackie, where I did the gauge swatch if I did I know I can't remember if I started with the sleeves or this one well the other thing that I love about a bottom-up sweater is that your sleeve becomes is a gauge. Is like a so, sort of gauge swatch yes um although I find for small circumference it's not the same for me I'm oh, pretty no, sure a, actually in this one I did the sleeves separate I think I did them after because I feel like I started here with to the get the mm -hmm. yeah to get the swatch or my kind of swatch which is to start do you yeah. know what I say to myself I'm like are you willing to pull this out if it's wrong and to save yourself from having to do a swatch like are you willing to pull it out if it's wrong and if I say yes to that then I'm like just keep going then because you don't have to do the swatch yeah. do I pull it out no probably not I just keep but going. you've you've started sweaters stopped them Yes. And then, like, change the yarn or, like, change the needle size. I have. Which is, you know, I've swatched... Because, you know, okay, here's the thing. Here's my thing about swatching. I feel like sw swatching is a psychological safety measure in yes. which you're like, okay, I'm going to swatch and I'm going to check the fabric. And I think fabric, for me, is really important. Like, do I like it? Is yes. it too, like, gapey or is it too tight or stiff? But then the fact of the matter is, unless you're one of those like tried and true gauge swatchers who's doing like a big gauge swatch, like if you watch any podcast yes. with like designers and they're like, I swatch, they pull it up. I'm like, that is a hat. Yes. <laughs> like, exactly. that, that is like a hundred stitches by like 50 rows is your gauge swatch, which is the appropriate thing for a garment. Yes. Um, but there's no way I'm going to do that. And I so know. I typically and like it. you just start knitting and then do a little steam block and just check it out. And then I kind of keep going. Yeah. But I only ever knit top down sweaters, right. which is what lets me do that. That's why you're like, bottom up is great. And I'm like, but I have to, it means that I but have why to- Why can't you? No. What's the difference? There is no difference. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get Jackie on them because I actually am like, it's a really nice thing because you go, you go up, things are, by the time you're here, your sweater's done. That's as true. opposed to like top down, you get there because that's the fun part usually is the yoke. And you're there at, and then, at, you know, returning to my cur or previous comment about not wanting to go around and around. Like <laughs> usually I'm like, Ugh, like when am I done? I just want to like go on to the next thing. Cause again, I want fun things. So here you're like fun, fun, fun with my little pattern. And then fun, 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 look how fast I did my sleeves, they're all done. And then you put them together in a really fun way. It's like a fun construction. It's not like um, you, you just grabbing all your stitches. Like, you, like, I don't know, there's something really cool about you put the two pieces together mm -hmm. and you keep them off and then you like kitchener them in at the end. And like, the kitchen underneath well, the so Liv suggested funny enough, a three, three, needle bind -off. three needle bind off, which it makes it a little bit, um, you know, it puffs out a bit. Um, it's stable though. I feel like oh, three maybe that's fine. Really nice. gives you a really nice stable seam. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also can we talk about the fit? The fit is amazing. Thank you. Like it, this is like, this is, I, I, you didn't, you sort of swatched <laughs> you have like, you know, <laughs> bottom up. <laughs> I just don't try it on. And then the fit is amazing. It, it worked out well. It, you know what it felt like? I was like, this is, I'm just going to knit the thing because first of all, I would also say, I know Liv, right? That's like true. I've knit yeah. many of her thing, her sweaters. We have, I think, very similar knitting styles. Like the, I almost always get gauge mm -hmm. right on with her. So I was like, I'm just gonna trust her and I'm just gonna do it. Um, and I, it was like, I finished it and then put it on. It was like 
I went to a store and tr was trying on a sweater. Yeah. There was something really fun about that. Now, of course, if there had been a problem, it would have been <laughs> disastrous <laughs> and devastating, but there wasn't, so that worked out. So beautiful. And I will say mine has less ease than the pattern. So Liv, one thing is Liv um, likes very like, Roomy. Loose, roomy, cozy. yeah, cozy yeah. knits. I tend, I like that, but for me, I like them often to be just a little bit smaller than the ease she recommends. So, what, so getting actually onto what I knit this mm -hmm. out of, this is not new to Din. Ah, I know, it's unspun, <laughs> but it's not new to Din. <laughs> it's Canadian wool. Oh my gosh. I don't, I wonder. Is that a plate right there? This is, I was just going to show, but I wonder if we have, do you, I mean, of course you have a new to this sweater. I wanted to see, oh, didn't they put it up here? Here, here, under here. Oh, perfect. Thank you. I just wanted to see if there's like, if we can see a difference with it. Maybe it's not coming out there, but it's a very different texture. It is a very different texture. This is Canadian unspun. Oh, I even, did I bring my little tag? Ah, woohoo. Low mileage wool, single flock. Nope. Nope. I brought wrong the wrong tag. tag. <laughs> Carmen, sometimes. There sometimes. was no tag. There was. Okay. She gave me tags and then I just grabbed it and I was like, oh, I found the little tag that she sent with it. Right. Uh, rewind. <laughs> <laughs> it's Canadian unspun wool. It's not low mileage because it's coming from uh, out east. Mm -hmm. Nova Scotia. Brittany, we're sorry. We got yeah. the we got this wool from Crux Fibers. Crux Fibers. Brittany, who if you've been watching, um, we're enamored with. She has beautiful, beautiful. Um, she's introduced us to the world of Canadian wool, oh, and this is and one I... of the things that she carries in her shop. This is the plate that you get. This is a Nutidin plate, and then this is the Canadian wool plate. And so hers comes. It comes in two hundred grams. But I actually just weighed this and it's 269 grams. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like this, my sweat, okay, so my sweater actually was 258 grams. Oh, we have enough that I can knit one. Yes. Well, I have so much too. I have so much. This is one. I've got another one. I've got, I've got plates and plates. We're going to see maybe my big blanket that I make. My <laughs> thousand stitch thing that we talked about, which I'm excited about. Um, yeah, maybe it'll be out of this, but see, look at, I go all over the place, all over the place. So this is unspun wool, but, so Liv's pattern, she designed out of mantelopes. Am I pronouncing that right? Mantelopes, so. by, wool dreamers, from by wool dreamers from Spain. That's an unspun wool from Spain, but it comes actually in double, I think it's double stranded that you get right off the plate. Hers is single stranded. How I would describe this as compared to new to Din is this one is a lot more stable. So I was knitting literally from the plate, from the middle of the plate, I was pulling from it. This is not the one I used, but um, pulling straight from here. And the thing, oh, that's the one that wasn't, <laughs> that was, didn't break. It was actually just stuck in there. Um, but it broke like four times, like in the entire sweater. So bottom one is new to Mm-hmm. Top one is Canadian ones. Oh, oh there we go. Are you gonna try it? Oh, here we go. I mean, this is pretty amazing. Both of them. Pretty good. Pretty good. It's okay, so it's more stable in my opinion than new to Din, but now new to Din does have like if the newer blends blades. might be a little bit, yeah. they are more stable. This, yeah, this is not to say, I'm just trying to compare the two. New to, we all know how much I love new to Din, so <laughs> that's always get that. But I was thinking to myself, if you're a person that has been watching our channel and maybe watching other people's stuff and is like, I really wanna try that unspun, like, but I'm a little nervous about, you know, like all the breakage and stuff. I feel like this is a great one to start with. Yeah, I agree. Because it really, you're still getting the unspun feel. It's still like light as a feather, it's airy. Um, one thing I probably shouldn't compare this because I've actually never knit with, or I don't even know if I've felt any, but the Plotalopi, like I think I've heard that's quite stable, but it tends to be prickly. It's very prickly. Yeah. 
this has no prickle. I'm wearing a tank top underneath this. Like I have no prickle at all. It's rustic. It, it's not as soft as Nutidin, but it's also soft in its own way. Soft is such a funny um, descriptor when it comes to wool. Yeah. Because I feel like soft is really relative. Yes. And there's so many different softs. Yes. You know? That's Anyhow. true. It is, I, I would say that it, I haven't knit with it, but I have pet this profusely and I squished the plates and sort of um, examined it myself. And I would say that it, it's like squishy. Spongy, spongy. is what I called it. I, except I feel like sponge is like not a pleasant sensation when I think about sponge. Sp springy? Springy? springy. <laughs> a good sponge? <laughs> <laughs> like a sponge, think of a sponge cake, like a that's sponge good. cake, yeah. not like a exactly. dishwashing sponge. Not a like, sponge, yeah, not yeah, a wet, like, not disgusting, a wet sponge, mildewy like thing. An, like um, it has like a bounce back. It has, yeah. It's a yeah. Uh, that was the only word I could describe as I was knitting with it. It had this, and especially when I first tried it, I because um the pattern is designed for double mm -hmm. stranded. I just assumed I would do this double. I oh, tried that. Right. It gave me the most squishy like. Dense. Dense, but but airy and squish. Like I just, I'm making something in yeah. that. Definitely a hat or like, you know, a cowl. But to me, I wanted, a, as you can see, I wanted a, a sweater that was a bit more like fitted and light than that. So I was like, oh, I guess I'm gonna have to try it uh, single stranded. So that's what I, so I, again, as I say, single stranded pulling from the plate, from the center of the plate and the thing ripped like four times in the entire thing. Like that's unusual uh, for unspun, unspun wool. And while it was very spongy knitting with it, and that was a very enjoyable, sensation in my hands. I really liked that. Maybe also with this pattern, it just felt nice mm -hmm. with the braids. Um, once I blocked it, it's, I don't feel it's spongy anymore. No, it's very like, um, like it's not drapey. It's lofty though. It's lofty, but thin. <laughs> it feels like a shawl in some ways, like it's like a drapey, it, like it would work for a shawl, like a very drapey kind of thing, but with structure, like it's just a bunch of like, you know, it's soft, but hardy. It's yeah, it's, it's just super so interesting. interesting. I remember, so I had um, felt this when it was a whip and it hadn't been blocked. And I was like, this is like the bounciest yes. thing ever. Um, and now that it's blocked, it is still bouncy. It's bouncier than I would say Clotilope, which I've knit with as well as Newtonin, but there is that sort of fluidity yes. in the in the fabric. And I think that, I think drape, I don't know, again, when I think about drape, I think about things that like, right. drape, but this I do think not there's do a that. fabric, there's something Straight. about <laughs> unspun fabric that isn't, it's not just about drapiness, it's about the quality of movement. I yes, sort of think fluid. about it, the difference yeah. between like silk and cotton. Like cotton, like yes. there's a, it has its own structure. kind of structure that it likes to keep or, or you can put it in a structure, whereas I feel like unspun fabric tends to have that like movement. It does. I think that's a good way to describe it. Yeah, and that's how it, that's how it feels and it just like, as I've been wearing it, it's also kind of become what I wanted it to be. Like, it's almost like it like learns my body and has mm -hmm. become, it fits every time I put it on, it fits a bit better even. Like, it just feels like what I'm looking for and yeah. what I was trying to do, which I, I always say is like the magic of, of wool that was like raised well and wool that you love. And like you're, when you're putting it into the knitting, you can feel like, all this positive energy coming from you, coming from the people that made the wool, like all the friendships, so. Yeah, I also think it's such a perfect like colorway to um, design. Yes. Like the aesthetic is really, really beautiful. And I love how, because you did it with a little bit less positive ease, I feel like it, again, I talked about this last episode, but like there's a real finished fit to it. Like yes. I love something that's like roomy and cozy, but every so often I think, um, it's nice to have something that feels a little bit more done. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Um, and this is somehow like done and rustic and cozy. Like it's so it's nice. The perfect. It, it's like the perfect fisherman sweater. It, yeah, it really is. And just to give, you know, another 
think with Liv and her designs, again, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to see this, but you know, everything flows. So you have you have ribbing on the bottom and then that ribbing goes right into the the braids. You know, so like it it's it's like it she's thought it through that all of this happens and then you have a braid that goes through the raglan. I adore the raglan braid. I know, right? Like it's right like, in oh here. And I left mine a little bit wider. I kind of liked it to be a little bit like see-through. Um, I could have made it a little tighter, but I was liking it as I was doing it. So it, mine kind of has a little bit of opening here. But yeah, so the raglan or the uh, the braid goes in through the raglan and then it goes straight into your turtleneck. Turtleneck is also a perfect fit turtleneck. It is, right? Like, I love Ooh, this turtleneck. And you can have it all the way up or you can fold it down. Yes. I just, I love it. I mean, I, I also it. think the other thing about the raglan that shows is like the strength of unspun wool. Yes. Right. Like that, that, that you've worn this and like, even though there's kind of this like. Kind of quite sheer, right? Yeah. Like, look at those are but just hanging on their own. Holding. Yep. Holding. I just like, I think that's also having met with it many times, you know, you, there's just a trust that you start to just develop with this, that it's like, it'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be fine. And if it isn't, just fix it somehow. It'll be fine. Nah. Yeah. So I'm very, very happy. It's so good. It's just a really great, so Fisherman's Raglan in Canadian Unspun. You could do it probably, well, depending on the sizes, one or two plates I think would cover pretty much all sizes. Because yeah, like, so I knit a three. I, I knit a but size your, three. Um, gauge is tighter, right? You did a tighter gauge yes. in the pattern. Yes. So I ended up with five centimeters less positive ease. So it was supposed to be, I knit the size that was supposed to be 105 centimeters. Bus and I ended up, bus size, mm -hmm. and I ended up with 100. Um, yeah. My uh, my gauge was, I think, I think it was supposed to be 17 stitches, and I ended up with 18. Really? Um, yeah, I know. I know, so right? Interesting. It's not super tight. Yeah. But it looks like a very fitted yeah. light sweater. Yeah. But for a single, yeah, I don't know. I ended, I think the I used size five, which would be 3.75 millimeters for the main, and then size three for the rib, which is 3.25 millimeters. I have no idea. One of uh, we were, I was reading the comments. Yes. And someone was like, "Why do you guys use U.S. Um, needle sizes sense. when you're Canadian?" And I was yeah. like, "That's an incredibly good question." I know. Why I... do we use pounds too? We, we measure our, <laughs> our weight in pounds, but okay. But I actually figured out the answer, which oh. is that all of my needles are still in like the because I have an interchangeable needle That's what case, I said too. And so like they they go. I I mean I don't always put them back in their slot, but technically when I'm looking Whoa. for a needle, wait a second. <laughs> Wait a second. You don't put them back? No. In the right spot? No. I know it's, it's a giant contradiction for what who I am. We have guess the between the two of us <laughs> about in the spot. oh my god, right back into no. the spot. It has to go right back into the spot, <laughs> or else I've actually had it where I've messed up and put it in the wrong, and then I've knit with like the wrong needle, and then I'm like, Meh. I mean, I pretty much every single time. I go and get a needle. I you regret that my past it. self didn't put it in the <laughs> slot because it's always like eight o'clock at night, and you know it's like winter time in Canada. And I'm yeah, like, can't at see the it. thing, I'm yes, like, he can't read. <laughs> <laughs> you use chow goos. I don't know if anybody, you know, out there, like you can't. I mean, my I, there are laser printers, eyes. but I'm like, oh, I don't actually can't see it. <laughs> I use my little knitting light. But I've got the. Yes. You've seen these Lumos knitting lights, by the way. Amazing, amazing. But yeah, I use it, and I'm like trying to look. Anyway, yes. You know what I love about the sweater? I remember when you posted um, your finished object photos, you were like glowing. Oh. And you know how sometimes, I mean, the sweater is beautiful and you're always, I always think that you're beautiful. However, I do think that there's something that happens that's magical about, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be a knit garment, yeah. but I feel like a knit garment, it like, it like pumps up the juice of yes. like the way that you feel in the garment yes. and how, there's like a connection between you and the garment and it becomes like you and the garment as like one being, being and that energy that it is just so infectious that I mean I basically always want to knit the things that you knit but <laughs> it, of all of the of there have been many many beautiful things and I really noticed that this one in particular you were just like it's my sweater you know it like is. there's a feeling that like this is 
is, this is my, my sweater. sweater. <laughs> I love this sweater. I wear yeah. it all the time. Yeah. I love this sweater. Yeah. Yeah. So we were talking about um, favorite sweaters and I don't know if this is of interest of people. I feel like people do these episodes all of the time, like sort of rounding up yes, your favorites. favorite, oh, we your favorites. That. And so um, let us know if, yeah. if it's like another favorites episode or if I love TV. those episodes because they really are. I'm like, hey, like, these are the ones once you've knit and it's the ones that you still wear. Like I've actually yeah. got we're getting deflected, but of course this is what we do. We talked about product versus process knitting yeah. last time. And I've been thinking about that a lot because I have many knits that I never wear. Really? Yes, and I actually don't even mind that I don't wear. So I must have a bit of pro, like there's a process thing in there somewhere. It's not like, it's not only, pro like I, in some of our comments, we were um, from our last episode, people were talking about the process versus product. And somebody brought up that like a real process knitter, like couldn't care less if like they'd never, like if the thing burned or something, it would be fine. Like, you know, like I know, like if, if you lost it, it'd be like, well, whatever, because I don't like, they never need to wear it. Nobody needs to wear it. They just want to enjoy making it. I'm not there but there is something I didn't realize that I'm like, yeah, I'm actually like, once I've knit it, I mean, I've given away things and I'm yeah. fine with that because I'm like, oh good. Like I didn't like, you know, it didn't fit or I'm not wearing it for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so as I'm like listening to us talk, if this is your first time here, you're probably like, what the heck are these people talking about? Well, I mean, hopefully we're somewhat intelligible, but it's this a funny thing <laughs> because um, uh, recently, Someone asked me, what, why do you do the podcast? And I was oh. like, well, that's a really good question. Yeah. A, because it's a super fun. B, because of the beautiful community that it's like offered us. And then as I was sort of reflecting on it, I feel like this is our modern day version of having a pen pal. We're like video, we have like video uh, pen pals, yes. sort of. Yes. You know, in the sense that like we talk about our knitting, we like we're having a conversation and then we, after some time, sometimes it's immediately, sometimes it's like weeks afterwards, sort of we get a like reply back. And there, yes. to me, there's something like incredibly romantic about it. And Carmen um, is so, so good with like the comments. Um, and I I read all of them. Sometimes I read them multiple times, mm -hmm. but Carmen is um, so good at, at responding in a more I timely way well, than me. Well, I can be weak sometimes, <laughs> but, but I just love them. Um, I, I read the comments yesterday knowing that we were going to podcast today because I was like, oh, now it, now I have an opportunity oh, to like respond, respond to people in this like, I don't know. That's really, I should reread, because I read them a while ago, yeah. right? So when I've responded, so I should reread them before. Yeah, that's a great so idea. Um, that that is why, and I feel like that's kind of the way that we podcast is we're having conversations and we're also having conversations that are part of conversations that we've had sort of off in the comments or yes. like in our DMs or like offline or actually a lot of the conversations that I'm having whether I realize it or not is um, I've been inspired by other podcasters or like vloggers and they've said something and it's inspired yes. me and so you know um, yeah I just thought that that was I was like oh that's kind of romantic and I kind of love that I do too so and I feel the same I feel yeah. it's it's wild to feel we're talking technically to my my phone, <laughs> like, but it doesn't feel like I'm talking to my phone. I feel like I literally are ta I'm talking to all these amazing people that, you know, write us back and like give, yeah. it's like I get to know, we get to know, yeah, people. know people. It's like really amazing. Yeah. Over the thing that we love so much. Um, I think I started with the, oh, so if this is your first time, welcome. And we're sorry that these episodes, well, we're not sorry. I'm sorry if you feel disoriented because <laughs> you're like, cause it seems to not have a beginning and an end. But I think yes. from the very first episode, yes, I feel like that was our episode, like, which wasn't even an episode. Cause that <laughs> it's just been like this ongoing conversation that we're like picking up strands from the last yeah. conversation and going on. So it's your invitation. If you feel completely disoriented that maybe you start from the beginning and we'll, yeah, we'll see you when this one arrives. <laughs> That's right. I yeah. love it. Um, one of the other things that I was reflecting upon in terms of like time was um, we both have been knitting, we've been knitting for years before we started the podcast. And there was a period of time that I would 
be like, oh, my, what am I knitting to kind of show on the podcast? Then I was like, hang on. It doesn't need to be after everything that I've said about chronological. It doesn't need, it's, it's really no. not a chronological thing for us. So often we'll bring, we'll like show things yes. that we just cast off, but then often we'll show things that we didn't just cast off. And that's why I feel in a way the whole like, finish objects and whips and acquisitions works but doesn't work at least for me because the last episode we asked you guys about whips and whether yes. you wanted to see whips and I don't have any whips with me I have two <laughs> but um I think <laughs> but it might be it'll be up and down right it'll be up and down yeah do do they get shown we don't know um but what I would like to do is do a little bit of dream knitting yeah to show a little bit of dream knitting beautiful Maybe later why not now oh, oh. okay we d we we roll off we're off east <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So um, I can't wait because I'm not gonna have known any of this too. We don't know each other's stuff. So um Oh yes, I did know this. You did know this. <laughs> so one of the things that I was reflecting upon is, you know, I pulled out all it's like it's officially the season change time in my closet. So I've like pulled put it finally put away all the like summer things and I've like pulled out all the wintry things Aww. and all the knits and so I had the opportunity to like pull out all of my knits of which there are a fair a sizable number and I um was looking at this cardigan that I knit actually maybe I'll change and put put it on. Yeah. It's a cardigan that I knit a very long time ago. And um it was one of my earlier knits. I knit it in New to Den Yarn. So pretty. And it is the Cocoon Cardi by Joying Knits. Oh. And I knit at a time that I was, it's storm and mohair. I think I knit it on a teeny tiny needle. Um, and I didn't gauge swatch. And so if you were to look at the pattern, it's supposed to be significantly more oversized. Mm. And of course, the theme of our day, right? Um, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. But I like me something that's like big and roomy and oversized. And so when um, Andrew Mowry released her big cozy cardi, I was like that if there's a sweater that's like you sweater, <laughs> like Jackie I feel like that is my incarnate. sweater. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at it and I bought the pattern and it's like a gajillion knits and pearls because it has this beautiful texture and then it has, but it has this like, the reason that I think that I love it is A, because it's super roomy, mm -hmm. B, because it has sort of this dolmany look yes. and C, because of this like luscious Surrey, Surrey collar. collar. And so I thought to myself, well, genius. Why don't I get some Surrey and transpose it onto this cardigan, which is beautiful, but it's like I would like it to be a little have a little more have a little width more to it. width to it. Mm -hmm. And if I could add, you know, a whole bunch of width to it, then I actually think it would it's gorgeous. Really suit me. Gorgeous. So this is my plan sort of um festive season knit. I love it to add this skein of Surrey to it's beautiful this cardigan and I feel like I'm gonna breathe new life into a cardigan and I actually like the fabric is it's I love the beautiful. fabric I love the color I just don't love the fit and there was no way although I have like ripped out Newton in Newton uh, Newton plus mohair, mohair I no. think it could be done right I think it could be done I think you could put it in the freezer and I think you would like rip it out so that when I Usually when I frog sweaters, it's like a little bit cathartic and I'm like ripping out the sweater. I think you just have to like rip it out like bit by bit by bit by bit, which so is enjoyable. how I, it's not going to happen. So no. I'm going to like refresh. Oh, I love it. So this Surrey comes from Fantasy Fibers, she's a Canadian dyer. Ooh. Oh, it's um, so pretty. And oh my gosh, I love it so much. And this is on her um, Surrey Alpaca base and the colorway is called city of starlight oh and so i was thinking about sort of festive knits and um i am a proud reader of young adult fantasy oh fiction. Yes. yes like especially around the holidays there's something about like the festive time for me that just makes me want to burrow into like magical worlds so oh. we like rewatch all the harry potter movies mm -hmm. We're like you I wanna be in this like fantastical world. And so there is an author whose name is Sarah J. Mass and she um has a series of books. Oh is it gosh. the Rat Thorns? Yeah, of thorns a court, or of, court of Thorn? 
Thorns and Roses. Yes. Yes. So it's like this whole series. However, uh, my favorite book of the series is this like tiny novella, um, which she tacked on at the very end, which is basically like, I don't know, 200 pages. And it's about Christmas. Oh. The, like winter solstice and the like um, solstice in a place called the City of Starlight. And so when I saw this, I was like, I have Done. to have it. I have to have it. It's like the most perfect festive thing. And so this is my dream knitting. And this is in a way me holding myself accountable to actually getting this done because the fact of the matter is process versus product. I mean, I have to pick up so many stitches. <laughs> so many stitches. We love an, lots of stitches. On an eye cord. <laughs> an cord bind off. Um, and then to go around and around. And then I have to go around and, around and around and around. Yeah. So I just. Well, actually not around. You have to go back and forth and back and forth. I just want to show a picture because I'm like, oh, as if all of these people know what. Um, the big cozy cardie. Big, big cozy cardie is. Um, one oh. of you guys commented and asked, like, can you please put the, like, text names of the oh, designers yeah. and the things. And, we you know, know we do not know how to do video editing. I think if we were to allow ourselves to go down the rabbit hole of video editing, we'd probably put out an episode once every four and a half months. Because Seriously. neither of us This is have why it's one take. <laughs> we don't know how to do edit. anything. We literally just talk and then um, stop it. But we'll do our best to kind of repeat the names um, yes. so that um, you can get them down. And also, man, I forgot to say this at the beginning. Everything that we talk about in terms of like patterns and yarns and needle sizes and even like weights and mm -hmm. um, finished object measurements that we don't have at the tip of our tongue, they end up in the description box. So if you, um, you can find all of the show notes in the description box or... Um, in our Ravelry group, there's also show notes so that you can go into that Ravelry group and just search and say like they said something about a cardigan or something about Surrey and then um, it'll come up. But this is the big cozy cardi. Ooh. Oh, so that's like, what I'm talking about, nice. which is like just, oh, I mean, I look at it and I'm like, I'm going to knit Is that. it a garter at least like card? No, no. <laughs> okay. But, but. Wow. <laughs> If you guys have been here for a while, you know that I can't knit any pattern as written. True. True. So I do have plans for a big, big cozy. cozy. Uh -huh. Like the, the, the actual the actual The actual cardigan part. Yes. Um, so I bought the pattern and it's super cool because it's basically, it's, it's a really cool construction in the sense that you're basically knitting like a giant rectangle and then you're seaming it up in a particular kind of way. Oh. Um, in order to get this drapey magic. However, it's this beautiful texture stitch, which is a combination of knits and pearls. And I looked at it, and I'm like, it's not happening. There's no way, there's no way that I'm going to knit this ginormous thing that is knits and pearls like it'll never get done. Why? I don't know. I don't. So this is a very strange thing, which is I used to hate ribbing. Now I like ribbing because I feel like it's like a badge of honor for my knitting um, technique. Because oh. I've come to a place where one by one rib, I can rib without looking at it. Ooh, good for you. Which like leveled up. The only thing that I can do without looking is stockinette stitch. Mm -hmm. um, and now like somehow my hands have figured out one by one ribbing. So now I like ribbing because I'm like, oh, I'm one of those knitters who can like <laughs> rib without looking and I can keep reading my book and I can do like hems and cuffs <laughs> and it's all good. Oh, However, a whole, mm, no. Well, and it wouldn't be, it's not one by one, like it, it's not it has one by all one. It has own. It. And then you have to check, like, am I on, like, there's a uh, there's yeah. row repeats. Like, and I was like, like I don't have the mental headspace for this. I know that this is never going to get done. And then I'll be like the saddest clam. However. We don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> however. Okay, this is my, this is. I do have finished objects, but I keep showing things that are older. Okay. I love it. So. I always. Oh, have a half and half triangles wrap um, on needles. the needles. Um, I did knit one in linen quill that I didn't bring with me because there was a sad story about that that maybe I'll take I'll tell some other day um, about my first half and half triangles wrap. But I, after I finished knitting the original one because of um, Patty Jacks, Patty Jacks, Caitlin and Jackie. Um, I immediately was like, you know what would be a perfect half and half triangles wrap fabric? It would be Newton. Of course. So 
which is absolutely true. When I, God. this is one of them. I mean, they're stealth blankets. Um, they're just blankets. Oh. But what I figured out is that I'm always knitting one of these and the cozy cardi oh. is approximately the same size as a half and half triangles wrap in terms of the rectangle. So I just need to gauge swatch and I'm what? gonna knit it as a garter. It's that big? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm, oh, by the way, I'm making this too, <laughs> apparently. Um, How is that possible? It's only four. Yeah, wow. That's... I mean, yeah. I mean, when I knit my half and half triangles wrap out of linen quill, I used, uh, I only ended up needing two, and a half or something. two skeins of each color. True. So if you guys don't know about this pattern, half wrap nation, <laughs> this is a free pattern by uh, Pearl Soho. And it essentially is like a color play pattern that um, mm, you... Put these colors together. How do you knit this thing? You start, you start... You cast on all of the stitches. Yes. So you start and you cast on this giant long thing and then you knit garter back and forth and you do short <laughs> row shaping to make this sort of like... So you end up with like one triangle. Yep. And then you end up... Um, adding the second color and then you resolve, the, them, you resolve you them and so you end up knitting like short gets longer and longer and longer and longer anyway this is my comfort knit I always have one and I figured instead of casting on another half and half triangles wrap I'm gonna cast on I'm gonna do a gauge swatch and I'm going to um, cast on the same size rectangle as in the pattern but in garter so I can just knit 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 mm -hmm. and then make it so that's my plan I love it however I'm gonna try this first to see if I enjoy the process of knitting a ginormous rectangle Shh. followed by two skeins of Surrey Shh. alpaca oh, for, oh, like oh. the collar itself is two skeins of Surrey alpaca single stranded um, and I love a legacy project. Yeah, I do. Um, but I we also love knitting. I also just <laughs> want to have it. And I know that if I start from scratch and I'm if I'm doing it like fingering weight, then um, it's gonna be a long time because generally speaking, each yes. one of these, um, each one of my half and half triangles wraps, the first one I knit in six months because I was like frantic that I wanted it. That was fast. Like six months? No, first one was three months. The second one was six months. I think this one took me 12. Wow. Because I wasn't working on it monogamously. Right. Um, <laughs> I always sorry, love when you put, like, no, I love it. Cause every time I get whacked with shawls <laughs> and it makes me laugh every time. I still don't think move Carmen when she's going to put it on, just move. Nope. <laughs> love it. Better you, I have black Frisco. <laughs> yeah, that's why he's like, Frisco's way like over all here. I'm just like the crazy little lady that'll come and hit me with garter. Um, I love it. But yeah. It's beautiful. That's so a good this idea. one is, so that's my plan. And my plan is not to knit it in Newton, but to knit it in this Canadian wool friend. Beautiful cake. Canadian wool. So I bought this Canadian wool. I think at the beginning or like April of 2020. Okay, because I was going to say that's not the same. Uh... Oh, no, this is lickety. Okay, yeah. sorry. Take so off. this um, wool comes from Lickety Spit Fiber Farm, which is pretty local to me. Mm -hmm. um, they have a lot of alpacas and sheep and dogs and they're an amazing farm that I came across somewhat accidentally someone told me that there was a place where you could go um, and basically uh, see alpacas and not be behind a fence and because I love alpacas I was like where send me the address etc I'm on my way I'm on my way and so they have an open house once a year once a year um where you can go and visit the farm and um it's kind of like a charity drive and you bring like pet food or a donation and you can like roam around and so um yeah so i love them they um not only do they run this amazing farm but they have been at least in ontario pretty instrumental in terms of developing a fiber community mm. And so um, in April of 2020, when everything, you know, sort of changed, they put up a post about um, having a completely natural sock yarn oh. that is made of mohair and gotland and fin. Oh, oh my God. And yes. I bought it as a 
like on a whim it just felt like I want to support them and also maybe I want to become a sock knitter and so I bought a bunch <laughs> and so this is wool from Sarah mm -hmm. um, and it's Aww. primarily um, Sarah's fleece and it's just been sitting in my stash for a while it's waiting for me to become a sock knitter um, but I think that I this is gonna be my cozy party and then I am gonna have to find is that a, a surreal DK pasta or a DK? To match. It seems so. It's almost like fingering. It's fingering. To me. Oh, okay. Yeah, so are you going to? It's a fingering pattern, isn't it? Nope. Yes. Really? You know, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For some reason, I thought this was the DK. Yeah. But it is not. So um, that's my plan. Good plan. And then I'm gonna find Canadian surrey for the shawl collar. But I promised myself that I actually have to finish this one first to see yes. if it'll actually get in it. Otherwise, that'll just wait for me to become a sock, sock knitter, or I might turn it's this waited into two a years already. It's, yeah, daydreamer sweater. By oh, Andrew Mowry. Yes, um, I made that one. Love that one. That's that's a likely legacy project for me. It's right gorgeous. Now. This is new to the yarn, Stardust, mm -hmm. and Fruzit button held with one strand of mohair. Oh. From, um, it was a Spas Trico that has now become Sondra Yarn Company. Um, and, you know, I tend to knit with Newton just straight, um, but I wanted to just, I had this idea of wanting like a frosty version of a half and half. Really beautiful. And the mohair was just this like beautiful, beautiful icy blue. And I thought, I want to augment the color a little bit because I've knit with Fruzit Vatten by itself and I just thought it might be fun and I oh, wanted to try the whole mohair thing and it is it's gorgeous like it really is that fabric is really delicious mm -hmm. I do think for me I personally love just Newton but it yeah. was nice to just have something a little bit different it's interesting too because I don't oh no yep yeah, if you feel I was like when I first felt this I wasn't noticing a difference between the two but now I actually absolutely do like yeah. the two sides this one has a lot more density yeah, to it. They're beautiful. So, I love these colors. Oh, these half and halves. Mm. Oh, my half and half. So this might be the, I usually cast off a half and half with the solstices or the epimax. Ah. And so I think this is going to be like my first year of not um, casting on a half and half triangle draft. But you'll do the, the cozy solstice, cardigan. But I'm gonna do the, the cozy cardigan. If you're then. done your shawl collar by then, I'm so not gonna be done the shawl collar by then. However, <laughs> she'll still cast yeah. on. Oh, I, I love, love these. I love these so much. These, I mean, I think yes. I I have to say when I first I did one, um, and I first didn't know how to wear it, but then I it was my fall stick it go outside like I would wear it. I would turn it, you know, like. It's triangle form, so you know, no, I'm going to hit you. <laughs> and it's just been this, like, I was wearing it like this and just going out, putting a little shawl pin in mm -hmm. and, like, just walking to pick up the kids. And it was, it's like putting a blanket on and you just sit there all cozy. And oh, it's so it's totally a really, a, blanket. a really nice knit. And, I mean, there's a million different ways to wear it. If you guys watch Caddy Jack, you guys don't knit. watch Caddy Jack, knit, Jack Knits. You need to. They're amazing. We love them. So there's like, they've shown how to wear it different ways. So you can yes. wear it sort of one color or you can fold it the other way, which, you know, makes it like this bi color mm -hmm. kind of thing, which I didn't used to wear it this way, but now I kind of like it. It looks really so good. kind of get that. Um, but really, actually, if I'm being honest, these mostly are couch blankets. Mm. And they're like the thing that I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't want to get out of bed. It's so cold. <laughs> it's winter. I can't have to have tri triangles wrapped in Nutrient yarn. Aww. It's so gets lofty and delicious. It gets it gets me out. And um, oh, because people are gonna ask. Okay, the it generally takes. It depends on the um, blend, blend how much I used, mm -hmm. um, but it is somewhere between, I mean, I don't know how it is. This particular, this one's gateway, this particular um, half was less than 100 grams. Wow. Which is wild, but gateway That's really was a old, very uh, old um, colorway, and I don't think some of the newer thing, it was like very, very, very thin. Oh, yeah, um, you can tell. 
I don't know. If it, look at how it just stays together. It's just amazing that this like very thin unspun wool can be wool so strong magic. once it's like put together. And then I think this side ended up being more like 140. Wow. So yeah, it doesn't take very much. It doesn't take very much. Yeah. Um, and it will keep you cozy. It is really for many. cozy. I would say about I I weighed this because I started knitting these before we became podcasters, and so I wasn't keeping track of any weights. I was just like, let me, um, <laughs> let me just cast it on. But what I will say is that the mohair, it took seventy five grams of mohair. Okay. For the one side. Um, and then the whole shawl itself is 320 grams. So that makes all me together. feel all together. So it makes me feel like you yeah. probably, you could do 150 to be safe. Yeah. Have like 150 you have two grams scans, or like two plates. Two plates um, you could color. probably get away with it. And I also, hilariously, I don't gauge swatch for sweaters. Um, however, yeah. I did gauge swatch for this. <laughs> Because the first time that I cast on the Happy oh, yeah. Triangle Wrap with Linen Quill was when I realized, Jackie, you are the loosest knitter in the entire <laughs> world. Because I cast on like for the large version, which was what, like 200, 260. 260 stitches. And I knit like, I don't know, a fair amount. And I like, and it was on like, of course, I'm using a ch chow goo like lace and I can't stretch it out. But I'm looking at it, I'm like, this, like, this is, is like enormous. And I decided, that I was like, I'm just gonna pull it out and sort of see how long it was. And I can't remember what it was, but it was absolutely comical. I was like, <laughs> it was a king size blanket. It was a king size blanket. And so um, should have kept did. it for me, I would have finished it. <laughs> <laughs> I am um, so I do gauge swatch for these again, basically to try and find sort of the garter um, mm. the garter fabric that I like so that it is drapey because it's big. And I think when you it's have big. something that's big like this, it's important that there be a little bit of a drape so that it can yep. sort of mold to your body. Yeah. Um, so, so I think that that one I cast on like 222 and this one I cast on like 198. That's much more so appealing too, because reasonable. if you think it's every, like you're doing the entire length of it at each and it's garter. So it's back and forth. So you're like 260, then 260 back. And then it's, 259, 259 back, 258. It's, it's a lot of knitting, but we love knitting. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think this is one of those projects similar to the Big Cozy Cardi, which is if it's more of a product knit for you, like mm -hmm. I feel like it'd be really hard to stay, like to keep the momentum yes. on it if you're primarily doing it for the product. And yes. I think these for me are just like the, it's like the background comfort, um, thing that I go to when yes. I want the feeling of having wool through my hands just have the soothing nature of of knitting now that it's not something that I have to think about yes right there's like a rhythm that I, it's kind of meditative it's that like state that I get into but I don't really want to I really don't want to be thinking at all about right. anything and I just feel like it goes back and forth and back and forth. And my idea around it, which is was inspired by Amy Palco of the Meaningful Stitch, was I wanted to have basically an almanac of, um, mm, yeah. of half and half triangles wraps that I, I would remember that it was like from this year to this year. And um, I remember this one I cast on going into the winter solstice because I was like, I want to embrace the sort of darker light orange dark. colors. And then the second one was moving into the light. Aww. Um, beautiful so yeah I love that I love and I'm really loving this you, you may not get it, it back yeah. <laughs> you know what speaking it because we're just going to bounce all over but just talking about these meditative knits and these things that are just enjoyable I I pulled this out I'm not I'm not done this whip see now we're gonna so we're going like a finished object to dream knitting to a whip here oh yes I should have given my like disclaimer my like warning brightness coming <laughs> watch out um, ooh, how many episodes back? It would be quite a number. I cast on this Mpo by uh, Noma Ndlovu. And this, I don't want this to end. Like it's, it could be done. It could be done. And I'm like, no, because it, then it's done. Like, I don't want it to finish because it, while for you, Jackie, it's garter. For me, it's a cable that I can read with no chart, 
and that changes every other round like it's pretty you know changeable just like my my sweater i like these like every other round having something fun to do every other round having it be really easy um it's on i'm even halfway through a row because <laughs> that's that's how i roll oh but gosh, it's so beautiful you're not probably going to be able to see this very well and i will probably have it done by our next one if i have to but let's just you know what i'll hold up the back actually that might be a little easier it's just oh the gosh. same repeat over and over you know exactly what you're doing and it's just so enjoyable and this is um it's called femme fatale which is a a variant on a brighter than barbie colorway from ginger twist studios in edinburgh look at me i like didn't even have to pause on all those things um it's a one of a kind but it, like it's when they're trying to make the brighter than barbie then sometimes funny things happen and you get this like slightly darker pink with these little purple you can kind of maybe see them in there Ooh, so great yeah you can see some of these like it goes a little purple um it's half silk half super wash merino merino yeah pretty sure it's heavier than anything feel this like it's the heaviest drapiest <laughs> and it feels delightful it's I, I can't when I put this one on I'm positive it'll be like one of these sweaters like I'm oh. gonna be glowing because I am so in love with it Just drop oh that's done. okay no no Safe. they're all good okay. they're all good <laughs> I can catch it again. I know this pattern. Like, and it's just the same. I don't know. I can't stop saying it. It's the same pattern all the way up. And there's something so comforting about that. Like, I don't want, it's very engaging. It's beautiful. Look at so all the different no things. there's no shaping? No shaping. Okay. You're just straight, straight up right doing this angle. big tube. And, oh, I even love how it's coming. Look how bright it is. It's amazing. It's just amazing. Um, but yeah, it's one of these knits that I, I'm almost it. So I'm done the back. I've got a little bit to do in the top um, and then just a collar and then actually the sleeves are stockinette. So that'll be the end of the cable and I just don't want it to finish. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I don't want it to end. I completely understand because one of the finished objects that I have, which Carmen hasn't seen, actually there are two things. So I used to, uh, well, I just couldn't understand what you were talking about because this, you know, I have a meditative, my meditative knit is a ginormous half and half triangles wrap. Right. Carmen's like, you know, when I just don't have any brain power, yeah. I'm going to pick up this. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, that, I don't understand. However, um, I have gone into a cables rabbit hole. So yes, the, I think the first re, like cable project that I ever knit um, is the Snowy Forest. This is actually a second one because I love this pattern so much. Mm -hmm. um, this is the Snowy Forest um, knit in Newton and Yarn. And you can see that it has these beautiful cables. Mm -hmm. And I would say this, is my first, this was my first like feeling like a proper cable project. This was the first iteration and loved it so much and oh, knit in a second color. But you can really see the cables better on this one, I think. However, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful pattern. It's super, I feel like this is one of those patterns that if you can get the sizing right, looks good. Yes. On everyone. Yes, agreed. Looks good on everyone. I would say of all of my knits that I've ever knit, like it out in the wild, this is the one that I get most people asking me about. That makes sense. Um, such a beautiful sweater so it's knit top down um there are these beautiful cables mm -hmm. and while I will say that I love this pattern I learned how to knit cables without a cable needle but the what's so genius about this pattern is that the cables actually get larger mm -hmm. so I can't actually remember I think it's like a four you're crossing four on four and four yes and then it goes like six and six and I'm pretty I it might go like eight to eight and so yeah, I was works. like I cannot imagine what it would be like to just pick up and have to do such a large cable because I was always like it was a little bit of like them. like needle magic magic um, and like you couldn't move because the needle, yeah, because you like had to hold it you, have to, you have to hold it anyhow. So um, I was like, I don't think cables are for me, even though I love How the sweater. How sad. 
then after Carmen and you know being totally influenced by her and cables I was like maybe I should give it a try again and I was like maybe I'll just start with a hat I'll just start with a hat the hat's like Best you know way to go. there's not you know um, not a lot of commitment. Not a lot of commitment. It's just like sort of a small project. Went on, um, oh. actually. So this is the weekend hat. It's beautiful. By, oh, hang on. I need to look at this name. I did make notes. I don't want to get it. It's the weekend hat by Hiromi Nagasawa, mm -hmm. Clay Needleworks. It's, um, her Instagram handle is Puko, P-U-C-C-O underscore H. Um, that will be in the show notes if you didn't get it because I didn't get that. Which will be in the show notes. Um, and it's called The Weekend Hat. I love this. And I, I just color. loved it so, so much. Um, the pattern when I saw it. And it was one of those ones that I sort of like saved. And I was like, I'm going to wait for when this releases. And it recently released. And it's such a, it's called The Weekend Hat because the idea is that you can knit in a weekend. Because oh. it is such a um, enjoyable. It's such an enjoyable sort of balance between something that you have to pay attention to and something that you don't have to pay attention to. So as you can see, I, I'll talk about my modifications. As you can see, there's like this big folded brim mm -hmm. um, in like ribbing and it's like a knit two pearl one rib, which I've never done before and think is super gorgeous. Yeah. And then um, this is really cool. Normally when I've knit folded up brim hats previously, um, what happens is you like, you knit it and then you fold it up and then your wrong side becomes your right side because you folded it up. Right. Well, this one, your right side remains oh. your right side because when you get done the ribbing, yes. you do a wrap and turn and you start knitting in the, like you do a wrap and turn and you turn your work and what was your wrong side now becomes oh, your right side. Yes, 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 I'm getting it. Right, because yes. my ribbing, like my, knits look better than my pearls like my right side looks better right. than my wrong side and I didn't really know this when I was doing the pattern I was just like Jackie does not read the pattern the way through which you should do but I don't do no, I, don't I was just like rip 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 yay 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 and then I got I'm like wrap and turn wrap and turn I don't understand what is and happening? then when I did it I was like oh, this That's is so cool. genius and I guess it has to be because if it's two and one it won't it'll be the opposite yeah it'll otherwise be one you're and doing two. curling two yeah. and one which yeah. you know cool if you're into into pearls but I'm definitely one of those knitters that's like I only like knitting stockinette or garter <laughs> stockinette in the round stockinette in the round and <laughs> garter um but yeah this so is so lovely it's I like this um like seam kind yeah. of so there's the ribbing and then there's cables mm -hmm. and it's uh, I I figured something out that there this is the I think this might be the difference between a beanie and a toque a little higher on the top, right? For the yes. Toque. Mm, maybe. I, I think that. of beanies as um, having a construction where it's not the same all the way around. Like it's kind of a beanie's meant to be like wow. flat on the sides. Oh. Like, because as you can see here, there's this beautiful seam. I love that seam. It's this beautiful seam on both sides. And so I think it's meant, and if you look at the designer's photo, hang on, where's the front, where's the back? It doesn't matter. Yes, it does, because Jackie made a mistake on the back. <laughs> she wears it like oh, higher Jackie. up. Yes. Like a beanie is like a higher up thing, and it doesn't rather, like, it's like flat. See, I, I see mean, what like you're saying. Flat, like there. And I if it. I think if I think about the way that she styled it and the way that she intended it to be worn, which I think is like a little bit higher up, this little rib detail is just so keeps it straight it up. Like keeps it straight up. It keeps the shape. It's amazing. Um, and I love it so much. I love it. This knit, however, for me, I did knit it in basically the equivalent of a weekend. But for me, it was like not a like um, oh let me just throw on and and like pick up and do some cables because this I felt like a brand new knitter because That's this is fun. knit um in the three ply worsted um Romney from Brittany of Crux Fibers um from the Sheep Ginny and you guys know me, I knit in Newton. Occasionally I knit in Surrey. Maybe I <laughs> Yeah, that's the hair. once a year. But like once a year <laughs> I depart from Newton and now I've departed 
to Canadian wool and this was like a delight delightful wool it was like silky yes. and drapey and delicious and also I was trying to do cables without a cable needle with this silky drapey oh, yeah. delicious thing right. and I ended up having to like go into like m the deep back of my craft corner to and be like find a cable there needle. are no metal needles I can't do on metal needles so I tried wood, wood, wood needles and everything was still sliding <laughs> off the needles and then I was like okay the bamboo you know the like yeah learn that's to what I'm doing this one bamboo on. because it's so slippy slidey mm -hmm. and then I ended up um using a dpn uh -huh. for the cables because I couldn't do that the like cross, cross um, because what I didn't really recognize until I had this wool on my needles is like Newton it just an unspun like more rustic wools like if you pull out your needle everything sort of like the loops stay it so it's really easy to do cables without a cable needle yeah um, but when you have this like delicious silky drapey like twist with like a three ply twist that's like bouncy and wonderful you really need I feel like you need I, I would I couldn't do it without the cable needles and also there are larger cables right like you're having there to pass how many are there in that um, one I can't remember three 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 um but you're having to sort of pass things over and the thing with cables that I find is because you're like crossing it over it's like the wool wants to go in a particular direction and you have to sort of maneuver it so that it's not you're knitting it in a direction that it sort of like doesn't want to go until you get halfway through the cable. Does that make sense? Mm. You like cross it over and then it's like, I found that this will like, it's like it wanted to go back. Go back. And I was like, no, 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 just wait. Let me give you like three more rows and then you'll be happy to Aww. like cross over. Um, Jeez, but can't wait to knit with this. I like, love it. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's 100% wool and it's so shiny. It's so shiny. I thought you held it with something like like, like a mohair I or something. I feel like it's shiny, like it's as so if there's shiny. mohair, but it's, it's not. So, or silky, kind of, like it it's looks like, like it's got silky. the same kind of sheen as yeah. my. Look <laughs> at every time I pull it out, I'm like, whoa, like a highlighter. But no, it's really gorgeous. And then I realized that I just like what I like. I just keep making I know, the same things the over same. and over again. It's the same cable, guys. It's the same cable. <laughs> Doesn't this look nice together too? Like those oh, colors yes. together. Yeah, but Jackie, that's good. So you this like was what you a, like. I like what I like. Um, oh, that is good. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's a really beautiful hat. So um, I highly recommend this pattern. And there are options also. Okay, so modifications. I knit the brim like way taller and part of it was that I had 100 grams and I was like I just want to use, use up it. the whole skein and mm -hmm. I kind of like having a taller brim like I don't know some people can wear a like shorter brim and it looks super cool but I feel like yeah I like that I like a I like brim. a taller brim um so I in the pattern there are two options one is to knit it without a without the folded brim and so you just kind of do the ribbing and then you go straight into the cables mm -hmm. um I made the brim much, much taller. And then as a result, I also knit three more repeats of the cable pattern um, than is in the pattern. Oh, because you wanted to offset? Oh, because it was gonna have to go over, I see. Yeah, because, because it was, part. because I- That makes sense. The brim is taller. And also what I discovered about this, because again, spun wool, I feel like spun wool wants to be certain things like wool that spun wants to be knit in a particular way in a particular gauge whereas unspun is yes. a little bit more like do what you want do with me and want. i'll I like fill it out i don't yeah. have a per i don't have um a set sort of thing plan, plan yeah. that's sort of in the way that the wool is made yes um so i don't remember what i was saying the way that um oh what i realized is that I think I have a very large head. Okay, wait, wait, just listen. Okay. <laughs> I don't think you have a very large anything. <laughs> That's hard to look like. Okay, but I, so I Tiny. knit this, I knit this according to the pattern size. Mm -hmm. And then I put it on and it was like, the ribbing fit, the ribbing was fine, but like, it was like too short. Like I feel like, okay, <laughs> express myself. Maybe the distance between my eyebrows and the top of my head is longer 
okay. than the average person. Okay. Or maybe my up here circumference is bigger than the average person because when I knit it according to pattern and according to the like specifications in terms of height, um, like it was like it like Beanie sat it was like it sat up here. Like a watch cap. Or like something. a watch cap. <laughs> and I was like, I'm like looking at the photos and I'm like, well, she has that beautiful little yeah. like, a little bit extra. I'm like, what's going on? Huh. I added, um, like it turns out that like the my finished uh, measurement height is like 10 centimeters taller than four inches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah, four inches taller than what is in the pattern. But wow. so this is why I think that I have both like the part of my head that's above my eyebrows <laughs> is like extra it large. Look large. Thank I can you. Tell you that. I was just like, but I don't understand. But you know, I knit it's on gauge. Yeah. Everything. I mean, but I need. I needed an extra ten centimeters. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did it. I'm glad you've tried it on. Yeah. And didn't just do what I do, which is like, now it's finished and put it on. Oh no, I bound it off did. and everything. Oh, you did. And <laughs> okay. I was like, and then you're like oh, oh no. cables. So you took cables, it out. like after you block cables, like a pre-block yeah, cable project and a post-block cable project, it's like transformational. Yes. Yes. And so I was like, oh, it'll block out, and so I steam blocked it, and then I was like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I switched it out and added like three more repeats. Wow. I'm happy with it. You should be. It's fantastic. And we were talking about whether this color would suit, like, uh, yeah. like we, you know, like different complexions and like, you know, season, if we're a bit into like the season colors, we both happen to be winter, winter seasons. So we weren't sure if it would work, but I absolutely yeah. think I'm, it's gorgeous. I'm like, I love it so much that I don't even care if it's not flattering it on looks, my skin tone. It looks amazing. You I look gorgeous. love it. So if, if, if you are a gift knitter, and you want to do something um, other than, you know people who gift knit and they're all gift knitting hats that are one by one rib? I'm like, bless you. Bless you. <laughs> I know, but they feel, they are really, well, I mean, they, I guess I have They feel really one. nice and cozy. They're However, really I'm going to recommend for those of you who are gift knitting that this is an amazing one um, to consider because the, there's like, you do your cable row and then you're basically doing like, I think like it's six, seven, rows seven rows of almost just stockinette. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, this has a wonderful momentum. And I was like, I get it with cables now. Now I get it with cables yes. because you're like, ooh, there's a cable, except it doesn't look good on the first row. And you're like, oh, I want to see what mm -hmm. it looks like. That's so true. you like knit a couple and you're like, oh, it looks really good. And then as you approach like the halfway mark then you're kind of like oh it's not as pretty anymore I wonder what the second cable is going to look like again. and then you end up with a whole hat um mm -hmm. yeah super engaging super beautiful lots of options this was a hundred grams of uh DK weight but probably like 190 yards well worsted weight right like oh yes that's right but it's more of a DK I but think. I knit it at, at what I would consider a like DK, DK gauge. gauge that makes sense um it is technically a worsted weight but it's 190 yards per 100 grams right so yeah that's which like is worsted. kind of like yeah so it's just so yeah it's so interesting so with the original pattern then would have had a lot less than 100 grams right yeah. like it, and that's how you knew you could extend because you like already knew you'd have enough to extend the brim. Yeah. And then you even needed more afterwards. So it yeah. must and take the, a lot And less. the um, original pattern, the brim is much, much shorter. And like I said, there's like two different right. options. And if you don't have like a super tall head, then you <laughs> Or whatever's happening over whatever's here. Whatever's happening over here. <laughs> not sure yet. <laughs> like some I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I did, I had a revelation about hats. Like I brought a bunch of hats. Um, <laughs> I'm like, this hat is the minted hat by Andrew Oh, Howard, that didn't fit really me. Love. That was too small. And I was like, look how short it is. Yeah, mine was the same. Maybe like, we're the I same. Like, I need extra height. Like, we, I don't know. Maybe it's not, you know, you know what it's like? It's like thinking oh, about. Oh, this is, yeah, it's too small for me. Um, Although I like it. It's, uh, <laughs> it's like, what's your ideal, uh body length after you separate for sleeves? Except there needs to be like a hat, a hat. version. Yes. And also trying to figure out, are you somebody, like, you're wearing it fairly high up, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know if I can make it much you make it go down. I don't think it, like, wants to go down. No, it's really, yeah. Uh, um, it looks really good on you. Yeah, I like it. But it's it's tight. It's tight. 
Yeah. Interesting. I must have a big. I know I have a big. I head. know your head. Your, your you know my head is no, big. This circumference is a little bit larger because I've tried your hats on before. But I do think there's also like height. It's like you have to figure out how long do you want the body after sleeve separation. So yeah. Like, how long do you want that? How hat long do you want your hat after height? It, like. Yeah. And I do like that look where it like stands up. Well, actually, because this one, we'll just sneak into my. Oh, see this one. Okay, I knit. Oh, it is. Yeah, you want to feel it? Oh, I'll show it first. Um, this is the Badana, 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 B-A-D-A-N-A -A -A hat from uh, Retrosaria Rosa Pomar. Is that how I said? Mm -hmm. um, so the, the backstory on this is that this wool is a um, native to Portugal breed that was, I think, used for quite a long time making rugs. So it was, it was wool for rugs. Mm -hmm. And then they're not, uh, people aren't really doing rugs out of it anymore. And so the breed is actually um, like dying out. Like it's not, it's not worth it for the farmers, I guess, to Aww. keep having the breed. And so it's starting to, you know, like they want to basically save um, this heritage breed. Um, so there's actually a um, an association that's doing that, trying to preserve it. And Retrosaria Rosa Pramar um, did, is doing a fundraiser for this to bring back Badana wool. Oh, so lovely. all the proceeds um, for these little patches, hang on a second. Ooh, is that, yeah, these patches go um, directly to this fundraising effort and they designed a little hat that goes with it and you you can get a kit off their website it's really quite reasonable I think Did you so, order straight from? I ordered straight from them and I think even with the shipping and stuff it was really like maybe 25 or 30 Canadian dollars for and the that, whole kit yeah so and you get like um you get a, a skein of the badana wool and then you get also a mohair uh, oh. skein as well so it's held with mohair for wool that I was expecting this to be quite scratchy. Like I was prepared. I'm like, it's, it was made out of, you know, they were using this to make rugs. So like how, how soft is this going to be? Yeah. It's like, can you, it's very it soft. Very nice, actually. Yeah. Like a very, very lovely, uh, a lovely, lovely hat. This pattern, like if you want to talk fast, this was. What is the gauge on this? It looks super <sighs> chunky and delicious. And I wonder, if it, and it seems like quite open, which I think sometimes helps when you're working with a more rustic single oh, buy, if you want something that's point. like softer. Cause it's not gonna like, a bit op yeah. more open gauge. I couldn't tell you as usual. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna guess like 13, like, like 11? Probably around, the, like I think I used 10s. That yeah. feels right. And this is what we were just talking about with the ribbing, right? So it's just, oh look, oh my God, I never. <laughs> never wove in any of this. I just tucked it in my brim. <laughs> That's car. There you go. Well, I'm just going to tuck that right back in there. All fine. Just in case I need a touch up. Um, <laughs> so you just go up. Basically, it's just ribbing all the way up, which I was like, oh no, like I hate ribbing. But actually, because it goes really fast, it's good. And then when you get to the top, you have some decreases that just go along the edge. Again, it's that seam. It's again it's that, that like sides. Yes, that pops. That's supposed to pop it up. But I don't, it doesn't pop it up for me. And one thing I will also say, so you get the patch that comes in the kit too. And you, in this part of the ribbing, you just purl as opposed to have a rib. So that you end up with, here, actually, I'll show you. Oh, right? Flat, so it's just knit on that side. And it's purl on this side so that you can attach your thing. But where it is in the pattern, you can see that it has to be held straight like this. So the, the patch is right on the side of your head. Oh. Which I don't oh. think is where I would put the patch. I think I would have put it a little bit more like forward. Oh. Yeah. Like I would have put it here. Right. If I redid it, it was so easy to do it. I would just redo it and stick it in that, the ribbing where it would be. It's so cute. Right also, I feel like that is your, that rich red brown, I feel like is such a good color on you. I do like this. Thank you. It's really pretty. It's a pretty, it's so and it's a nice pretty. soft hat. But again, I have to make sure that it's on the right way. And I don't know that it's like, some people just have these cute, like when you put your I, thing on, it was so cute. And I don't know that this looks all cute. Like I think it looks pointy. Cute. But I do, no, so here I think it needs to be taller. I think it needs to be taller. I think you're right. 
I, have, I think you also have a tall head. Well, this one's <laughs> not a surprise, but you're right. See, now it looks better, so I need to just knit. I have a lot more. And right. also, I was watching um, Andrea Mowry's um, I'll Knit If I Want To, and she was wearing one of her, uh, it's like the Harley Harlow hat. hat. Har yeah, Harlow hat, which is um, brioche, which mm. I'm going to talk about how amazing brioche-ish is in terms of a stitch. Um, mm -hmm. And she was wearing it like, like so cute. It was like this. Like but she had her so bang cute. out and I realized like, okay, I'm going to get real practical. Like my ears are cold. <laughs> I know. This is the thing. Like we live like, in Canada. This is Canada. Although like, she lives I in Maine. I need it to be down here. <laughs> yeah. Because then I'm cold. I but I, I've been observing that now. Like, you know how now that you've seen something, you can't unsee it. Now when I'm like looking through knitting patterns, I'm like, that's such a cute beanie. Because in my head, I'm like, I'm not a beanie person. Beanies don't work yes. for me. It just turns out that I have a tall head. And I need an need XL a longer beanie. Like a long, long beanie. body beanie. <laughs> and I have to look cute in my hat but have cold ears. <laughs> like That's what all the cool kids are doing. It's worth it. Fashion first. Yeah. <laughs> Pain, pain may come along, but do it for the fashion. Yeah. That looks really cute. Yeah. I think it's really sweet. You, and you could make one and have a ball. I will make one. I absolutely am making one of those. And and I think I would make another, like, honestly, like, I, I, I think I might pull one. this out. I, I might actually pull it out and do what you're saying. And then make you it taller. I do. Yeah, there was definitely a lot left. Yeah. It's so soft, you guys. It's so soft. There's... I was shocked. I was ready for something to be scratchy. There's no scratch at all. Oh my god. Oh, look at you. It is a little big on you, but it's so cute. Oh, it's adorable. You know what also helps? I'm a short person and I feel like any height is uh, helpful. <laughs> it's helpful. <laughs> this is so, look, oh, I love it. Every time I make a hat, I, I'm like, I like it. And then Jackie puts it on. I'm like, oh man, looks way better on you. No, no it looks really good. That is so, hey, this is an example of how we can't see our, I don't think that we are trained to see our beauty as well as we're trained to see other people's beauty. Yes. Which I appreciate. Thank, Thank you. you. That, that is probably like, true. how cute are you? I am pretty cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to redo it though, I think. I think I like it. Yeah, see here or like just a slightly there. The patch is so I cute. Put. I know the patch is really I cute. I would like buy the patch. But you can't. So great. Thank you for saying that. Oh. You can just buy the patch. And oh. then all of that stuff will actually, that's what goes to the association that's trying to save this sheet for you. so cute. And again, like we just want to say, you know, like this, I mean, it's a theme, right? Like this is yeah. something that we're really feeling passionate about, like wool production and using it. And like the idea that fleeces get burned because they're not actually useful, it's like not it's not financially, financially um, worthwhile. worthwhile. Like, and the because the fleet, the, the sheep have to be sheared. Like, they that's like humane. Like, so you have yeah. to actually shear them. But to sell it and process it, it hasn't been so worthwhile. Long. But now, like, we want yeah more of this. Yeah. All of us knitters, we can come together. We can make a difference for these yeah. sheepies. Yeah, yeah. I have one more hat. <laughs> funny enough. Um, Actually, I have another hat that I, I made for my sister, but she's taken it. It's not a hat; it's a hood. But we'll talk about that next time. So we have <gasps> talked, we have talked about a long way homestead, <gasps> and I am part of this. Um, uh, it's a monthly subscription program that you end up with wool each month. You can choose between fiber or spun wool. Um, I have the spun wool. Um, subscription and every month you get a cool new breed that's of of Canadian wool like so somewhere it's it's been grown in Canada the sheep are grown in Canada it's milled here it's all Canadian all yeah all Canadian and you get these beautiful oh, okay that's not like cards oh you can't fully read it but you can see it's going to tell you the sheep breed that you get and then a bunch of information about it more information on the back about the wool, the kinds of fibers, like the length of it, average staple length, all these different things. Um, and you get to try out different breeds. I actually, before I talk about this, I thought I would just even bring a few other examples. I have so many, right? But a few other examples. Oh, this is their Shetland. It's a Shetland in a sport weight. 
Jackie, I want you to try feel this. This is what made me die for Shetland. This is what Shetland did? Yes, this what is what I was saying. I'm like, life? I contacted Anna right away. I was like, how do I get more? I need more. What is it? You know, like, it's just like a, wow. Not the Shetland I would have thought of, like, when you think See, about, I like, think Fair Isle. Like Fair Isle and rustic, kind of but, rustic. like, this is, like, merino Silky, soft. Silky, merino, like, but it has, like, a, mm, like, Brand a lanolin. Like, oh. oh, my God, right? Love oh. that. Um, this is a Polworth 3K, or 3-ply three, uh, three DK. Oh, I'm like that. Love that color. Um, Polypay. And, I mean, I have the things upstairs. I could tell you all about this breed and how it was developed. Um, that's a chunky, I think. Yep. And look at this, an Icelandic single ply, grown in grown in Mildon, Manitoba. These are all. I think these are all grown in Mildon, Manitoba, right? Uh, actually, some of them weren't. All I the ones that, you're, that are here. Are all these ones yeah, are. There was another one that I got recently that I think. Oh, maybe it's this one. Oh no, grown in Mildon. Oh yeah. Oh, maybe this is Manitoba. Manitoba. See, I that looked like NB. I NB. thought it was New Brunswick. Well. I don't know if that's Manitoba or New Brunswick. But in any case, we talked a bit. Jackie was much better at explaining <laughs> than I was last time. But go, I would recommend going to the website, um, longwayhomestead.com, finding out what they're doing. It's, again, Anna and, and, all, and her team just really trying to bring back, um, you know, Canadian wool production, making it an actual viable um, industry uh, here in Canada. We have so many beautiful sheep. We have so, you know, we've got lots of space to grow sheep. Like we should be doing more along these lines. So anyway, definitely would recommend being part of that, um, that subscription. So then uh, I think it was this month, last month, I got my little, I got my package in the mail and every time you're like, what's it gonna be? And you don't know, and it's so exciting. I ended up with Ramboulet which I've obviously, I've knit with it. It's been in blends and things that I've been, you know, I've used before, but never, I don't think I have anything that would be rambulant, rambulant. Like 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is it's actually, it was created um, as an alternative to Merino. So it was looking to be as soft. They were looking for a sheep that could be as soft as Merino. But suited for our climate or? Yeah, I guess you can't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah do we grow Merino sheep here? I don't know. No. Seen, I actually. don't really think of it as a Canadian thing. Although, no. yes, fiber and forge has merino. Oh, they, oh, that's true. So there you go. Yeah. I've got like stuff in here. <laughs> oh no, that's my, that's, that's my palm. I'm like, what is in here? Anyway, so I get, actually, I even pulled out my little, here. It was a chunky, a chunky kind of skein single ply but look at this craziness like so it is i don't know like was this hand I, I mean i know it wasn't hand spun but geez like it's all completely fun different and so squishy soft like i was just like i need this i literally dropped everything and was like i need to make something so i'm like why not a hat and again you know if you watched last time i had um just taken this course with well, of course, a class with Kate Atherley, and it was a top-down hat. So that would make sense to do a top-down hat, right? Because I just learned how to do that. No, no, I was just like, how hard is a hat? So I just cast on, didn't think about anything, and cast on from the bottom. And then I was like, I want some cables, of course, because for me, cables is everything. Oh, that's blowing it. Oh, here you go, you can see. Um, so I just did a really basic I did three, actually funny enough, I did the same thing I did, I think it one and two or two and four or something like with, yeah, two and four, four knits, two pearls, four knits, two pearls, mm -hmm. and then just did a cable up the top. And as I started getting to the top, I'm like, okay, so now I guess I need to like decrease. So I just decreased along the, the, the knits, the knits. The knits. Yep. So it made this, I know you'd think I would have done the pearls, but I did the knits and it made this like, kind of like, it looks like a candle, like flame, like oh, really cute. And it just sort of went along and then I just cast it off. And then I added these little, this little pom-pom that I had had from a, um, pom -pom. it's good. And actually, so we talked about your pom-poms. I have some of the ones that are like yours, um, where you have a little button, which is nice. Like, so you sew in a bottom button, or the bottom part of the button, and then you can clip your pom-pom. The pom-pom has the button on the bottom. Yes. Like that. 
which I like, but I found for myself sometimes the palm, palm would fall off, like because I'm tall and so I get into the car <laughs> and like I would hit, literally hit the pom pom on the top and it would fall off. I know, these are, the, these are the struggles of my life that Jackie, I'm sure, never, never comes across. I never hit my head on anything except <laughs> But what I don't like is when you have to commit to your palm and you're like, you don't want to sew your palm on because then you can't really wash your head and all these different yeah. things. So this is an option where it's like coming apart, oh, but you tie. You tie on your palm. Yep, you just like thread it through and then you tie it and then you can make it as like tight as you want and just tuck it in obviously like I do Roll with all it. the other things obviously um yeah and then I ended up with this hat in like two hours something like that to be fair doesn't fit me perfectly <laughs> it's a bit small I really had to uh I had to did really like pull. I did I, I blocked it like it's so cute it's a it's a little tiny if I did it again, I probably would make it a little longer and stuff. But it's cute, right? We need to figure out our magic hat measurements. We do. We do. Like yeah. What length? You're right, because I know what, my like, like circumference, arms. Like, like with garments, I feel like you and I have our magic. Andrew Mowry calls them our magic numbers. It's yeah. like how long do you like the sleeve, and what size do you want the sleeve at the top and the bottom, and what size, like what length do you want your body? Yeah. See, hats. I feel like I don't. I'm primarily. I'm like a garment knitter and a shawl knitter. It's like sweaters and shawls for me. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I have somehow, I've been hit by hat fever. It is nice. And you can try out things with that. That's hat. why. It's just so quick. And you're like, ah, oh, it's not a big. Yeah. And I feel like it gives you the opportunity to try like stitch patterns yes. and to try like to see is this enjoyable in terms of process. And then as you're working with like new yarn, which I'm starting to work with non-mutant, it's like, well, I, I like a sweater would be daunting and how do I know that I'm gonna like this and um, yeah. so that I use the wool and a hat is such a perfect place like to start. little place to start I feel like fit once you get your measurements and yeah you can figure Just it out or like do a lot good. of ribbing like rib hats so that they stretch out and fit yeah it's so cute do you know I'm so I'm starting to read um Elizabeth Zimmerman um I don't know if you've read anything by her no. oh my god like people have talked about and all the rumors are true like this woman i just fantastic like you're reading it and i'm laughing like as i read it's as if you're talking to like she's literally just talking to you and she's like go oh, like it's not a big deal like everything's like don't worry about it and try this and do things and um she was saying that when she casts on a sweater she doesn't do a gauge swatch she makes a hat so and she's like it's quite convenient that half a sweater generally is a hat circumference so you basically That's knit it right. and then and then you can use that as your hat. Like you can use it as a hat after. Like she's got kind of a little like pattern oh, or whatever. And I cool. thought that was really a- Are all the books just... still in print or do you have to like dig, like go? Cause I feel like <sighs> there are, what I remember about like the lore of Elizabeth Zimmerman is that she has all these books that basically teach you how to knit from, you know, whatever, um, situation but like some of them are out of print or some yes. of them are well this like, is where a library comes in to, i guess oh cute i think we're in the library so that the library has elizabeth zimmerman elizabeth knitter's, knitter's almanac. almanac and so she starts with these uh it's just oh my god it's just so fantastic it's fantastic but it goes by the month she starts with an Aran sweater and she's like, and then after you get the Aran, then everything else is going to be easy. Yeah. Like it's like a cabled Aran. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, so I was just like, I'll have more to say. Oh, it's her little. oh my gosh. Right. And it's all, I don't know. I just, something has opened up in me like where it's like, just try. I'm just like, I'll just try. I'm going to, I'm saying to Jackie before this, I want a, Next, a very thin, fine cardigan, like fitted with fine wool. And so this is actually more from, do we talk, we talked about, no, Not this that. was your other one. This is uh, some wool from Fiber and Forge, more Canadian wool, Abbotsford, I think, BC. Mm. Grown in BC, spun in Alberta, 100% Canadian, gorgeous wool. Oh, oh my God, fingering. Oh. And I'm like, I'm not even gonna get a pattern, I think. I'm just gonna try, like, why not? Just try. I might regret this. But one thing with spun wool, I will say, 
is it's way easier to pull out than unspun. So there is a sense of like, if it didn't work out, it'd be like really quick to just pull it out. It's not gonna break and stuff. Like. Again, I think it's like knowing yourself and knowing how you're gonna feel about it. Yeah. Like, are you gonna be discouraged by it? Are you gonna I be- I probably will be discouraged. Are you gonna be, so this is what happens to me with like newer things. Like, you know, there was, I really enjoyed this, but there was a lot more doubt in knitting this or like, is this gonna work out? Mm. Is it gonna be, am I doing this right? Like there was a lot of these like, you know, like just new, new knitter, new things, questions. Yes. Whereas um, sometimes it's really nice to knit something, for example, like a designer that you know and yarn that you are familiar with. You just, there's this sense of like, it's gonna work out. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if you're the kind of person like you are, who I feel like you love um, taking on something new and that excites you and it, yes. it makes you really enthusiastic and if it doesn't work out, you're totally fine with it. Whereas I'm, to I'm different. I'm like, oh my gosh, like devastation. Do again. I um, don't, I mean, to be fair, there I don't enjoy, I yes, yeah. I do sometimes get really upset, but yeah, it's not enough. I guess. This is so cute on you. You should try Well, now watch as Jackie now puts it on and looks way better. Here we go. Um, I do think that I, I do oh, think that this, like, I, I would call this a toque and I would call this a beanie. See, I would go the opposite. Fashion people help us. <laughs> to me, a beanie sits like a watch, like a beanie sits oh, like, like, tight. Like, tight. Like, it's tight. like a yeah. beanie on your bean. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Is that what's, that's why it's called a beanie, isn't it? I thought so, but that, as I was saying, and I'm like, do we call yeah. our heads beans? I don't know. Look. Anyway, that's what I thought in a toque house um, more of that. I think that, it's really cute on you. I think that this, um, <laughs> like, like the fitted over my ears, I think that's my preferred hatchet. It looks really good. Oh it looks God. really good I, as always. You know I love a pom. I know. I love a pom. Although my uh, my kids are like, that doesn't go. Like it that goes. that bow. And I was like, yeah, probably you're right, but <laughs> it's a statement. It's a statement. I might want it. Like uh, what I've also been thinking about is like. Um, doing some natural dyes, like you know, like finding some like wa like walnut husks or something, and making this like a, um, a brown. Or even I was like, because I'm impatient and don't have any walnut stuff. Like I was like, what about coffee, like or tea? Just stick it in mm -hmm. there. I might do that. And then, coffee grinds. Yeah. That's and one thing I want to say about just the energy cream. sharing of things. This happens in Newton often too, where certain blends people will end up like knitting the same thing like cable there was uh there was a blend called uh, or like a colorway called parallel and we all i ended up doing a cable like headband caroline had didn't like it was just cables it was calling for cables anyway so this rambouillet i knit this and it was immediate i got it i had to knit it and then i saw a couple days later um and i hadn't posted anything um that uh leanne from the knitty stew she had just gotten her rambouillet same thing and she made a like a cabled Headband, which I almost actually, when I got to this point, I almost left it as a headband, and then I was like, "Well, I'll just go to the top." But like, we basically created the same thing, not knowing. There's something about the wool that the pulls wool tells that. you what it wants to be. I think. Yeah. And you can do it from a really intellectual perspective of like understanding, like twist and ply, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Or you can just, as we do, yeah. throw caution to the wind, listen yeah. to the wool, listen to the wool, and just try it out. And I mean, I think, you know. The first year that I was knitting, I don't think I would have been that brave. No, for sure. And I think no. it's, it's, you go through periods of what excites you in your craft. Mm -hmm. And I feel like experiment, I feel like we're like in the experimentation phase. Totally. Think, of trying to find um, ways to apply the knowledge that we've gained from all the different patterns that we knit um, to creating patterns that, like to just creating garments and accessories that speak to us. Yes. I love this. It's really cute. And it's really, like, it's so squish. It's really squish. It's, so squish. it's like, it, I mean, it's like knitting with roving almost, I think. Well, kind of. Like, right? look at the, look at the size of some of the, like, it was, it's so thick. It's so thick. It I mean, fun. I have to say that, <clears throat> you know, when, if you weren't a knitter, you could, like, pretend that you weren't a knitter and you thought about, like, a knitted sweater. Mm -hmm. In my mind, it's cream cables. Absolutely. You know? Elizabeth Zimmerman even says, and you probably want to make this cream. Like, like cream cables. Erin. So, yeah. um, that said, I do love a cabled sweater in like a punchy color. Like a bright pink? 
Yes, like a bright pink. Like I do think there's something, I, I think it's really like yeah, delicious to have a, um, like a classic pattern yes. in a really like fun, fun. poppy um, color. I agree. Um, okay, what else? Last hat. I think, do you have another hat? I don't have another hat. Okay. No, because I have a, I made my sister. I gift knit to gift, gift knit. knit. I was not a selfish knitter for once, for the first time in a like very long time. But how dare she? She <laughs> took it with her. She went down to Toronto for a few days. My sister's here from England, and uh, she went to Toronto for a few days, and she took it with her yesterday. Doesn't she know that you have a podcast? To do? Seriously. We love Next you, time. We love you, Jan. I'm sorry. Um, so I am not a gift knitter, although I have. I've gotten to a place where I ended up gifting things that I knit yes, that I was like, work. they don't, I love the process. I thought it would work for me. And then you just look at it and you're like, this isn't for me. Yep. So I've gifted two hats recently, um, which made me think I could never gift knit a garment because I think garments are really personal. Like I think fit yes. is really personal. And if you've ever knit a sweater, it doesn't matter if it's an Aaron sweater. Like I feel like it's not about being knit worthy or not. It's actually about finding the sweater for the person. And yes. I feel like that's a really intense personal thing. Yes. Um, that unless you have the opportunity to like know somebody's style really well and like get mm -hmm. one of the garments that they love the fit of and then figure out the drape and then yes. find a pattern that has similar schematics like a garment to me just seems too vast yep but i, I understand agree. why people knit hats because they're really quite doable so i was thinking about um testing out some uh, maybe becoming a gift knitter or just testing out some hats and maybe. so maybe <laughs> testing out the idea that maybe she'll become a gift yeah. knitter <laughs> i love this Thinking about, um, cause I have, you know, there was a period of time that I was trying to make hats and socks for people. Um, mm, don't try and make socks for socks. people. That was an error. Yeah. I did my, my first pair of socks I knit for my husband who has size 12 feet <laughs> and fingering yarn. I like, what was I wow. thinking? And I, it, they obviously, you know, yeah, did no. not fit. And I was like, I'm never doing this again. And then all of my, um, gift knitting mojo was just like done. done. Um, but I was thinking about patterns that are um, that are like forgiving in terms of fit, and so I found this hat. And also, uh, last episode, there's there I showed this uh, sweater that I knit out of Infinity. Oh my gosh! Did I put the top on the bottom and the bottom on the top? I hundred percent did. Oh no! Um, the Infinity, and I wasn't done with the color, so I was like, maybe I'll knit a hat. And so this, oh, I feel like really I need a pom-pom. Which one do you want? Um, I don't know. I brought this for you to help me decide what pom-pom goes on this hat. Ooh, I mean, that's very this one? cute. Oh, I love this one. Or this one? No. This one? I think that one's my favorite. Oh, this one. Yeah. So this is the Pinch of Yum um, hat by Samantha Garen Designs. Oh, I love Samantha and it this was i think this was my gateway into cables because it's ribbed with a little with like nice. little teeny tiny cables it makes this like beautiful texture which to me what i was going for was kind of like the facets of a jewel because i was thinking infinity like glows from the inside so i wanted like a jewel hat oh. um and because it's ribbed i think it will fit different this will never sides. fit me. no you don't think so well we return to our previous <laughs> but it's stretchy it's really quite stretchy it's the it's the height all oh, the height your ears aren't covered are they no no too small i, I clearly nice. have a height issue <laughs> you've got a tall head got got a tall, tall it goes head. along with all the rest of me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well this is some, like who when you buy a hat pattern Normally it's sized for circumference, yes, right? Yes, not the I mean, depth. I think that the like finished dimensions do talk about it, but again, this is one that I think would be, I, I think it's beautiful. I it's adorable. It. It's yes, and cute. I think if I just made it taller. Taller. Super fast. Cute. Very and calm. Cute. Now I'm just gonna have to not move. No, yeah. um, stay there. But again, I think a really good, I think it's a good choice for a gift knit because of stretchiness. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and. 
how and it's really right? fun. Yeah. And it's like rather than a one by one rib hat where it feels like, oh my gosh, do I have have I reached the length yet? Like am I at the crown decreases yet? Because I hate knitting. Um, <laughs> it's um it you're like, oh I wanna I want to like see the next like step. I want to see yes. the texture change. That's the thing with um, cables. That's the thing I with just cables. Love cables for that. Although I do have to say, I understand the white cream sweater because I mean I love this, and I think it has really good. I do, I do think that there's good stitch definition. Yep. But you do kind of have to squint to see the texture. Yeah. It helps I think when it's on when it's like spread out a little bit more. Yes. But I love this hat. I think this is it's my really previously. Cute. My previous like favorite hat was the minted hat, um, just because I love the the shape on me. But again, the second one that I knit, I knit longer because this one's too short. It is too short. Um, but I think this, this has been might very be the go to transformative for me. This this podcast. <laughs> Hat fit. Yes, because I had Hat never fit. thought of this, but it's exactly the thing. It's it's the length. Yeah, absolutely. I just need to go longer. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, this one was a little too, but yeah, I have more. And also a palm. A palm is fun. Palm is fun. I need the right palm. So yeah. Love it. So I have one whip that I could show yes. or yes? Show your whip. Okay. And Jackie hasn't seen this even though she knew I was gonna make this, so I don't know if you do you know what I might have cast on? No. Okay. And I, I, it's funny because I updated my Ravelry and then I was like, she's really good on Ravelry and stuff. Like it just has it on there because I took it out of my queue and she, I'm like, she's going to know. But no, she, I don't know. Oh, this is so exciting. It. So to set it up, this will not be surprising to anyone pretty much because it's one of those patterns that everybody's been making. Um, the pressed flowers <gasps> shawl everyone's been making. And then Amy, Amy Christoffers came out with the pressed flowers cardigan. Oh which gosh. actually I probably have, oh my God, you have a picture? Yeah. Uh -huh. oh. oh, isn't it so beautiful? Oh my gosh. I have been talking about knits that we need. What I need are more cardigans. I do not need more pullovers. I keep making pullovers, but I really need more cardigans. Um, and so I was like, I gotta make this. And when I saw that, I was like, I, and I had all the wool. So I had this wool that I had bought from, um, it's a Brooklyn Tweed. Oh, where did I put? You know, I brought a bunch of stuff out and then I lost, oh, here we go. It's one of Brooklyn Tweed's um, ranch kind of uh, colorways. So they basically are these special single source Colorado Merino. It's like um, they get their, um, they make the wool for this particular um, run from, particular places in uh in the u.s and this one's from julie hansmeyer champion of the merino breed and uh yeah so anyway merino wool but raised in um raised and milled and everything in the u.s and i had a bunch of it just sitting in my stash i also had a bunch of spin cycle which i bought spin cycle i've only ever made one hat with it and it just has always sat there but i like i've always wanted to and in in this particular pattern it's beautiful. I think it's been, it's beautiful in everybody's, you know, all the shawls I've seen, but there is something I think about the change in color that I really wanted. And I, so I knew I wanted to do spin cycle with this. So I combined two things. Dun, dun, dun. Oh my God. <laughs> Isn't it lovely? <gasps> so this, the, the main color is called saddle, which is like such, it's so saddle, isn't it? Like oh. tan, I mean, this one's blowing out a little. It's more of an orange, like picture, no, there is a bit. There it is. Yeah, like picture oh. a saddle, literally. And then I had this gorgeous, um, it's called lab, labradorite. Like the crystal. Yes, exactly. And I have been enjoying this knit so much. It's back and forth, which you'd be like, ah, the pearls and stuff. But actually, it's it's mostly garter. Um, it's mosaic knitting. It's right? mosaic knitting and garter in between. So you end up like on your on your wrong side rows, you're still knitting. And this is another one of those situations where you just don't want to stop because in this case, it's the color change. Like you just don't know. And in spin cycle, it's very long. They're really long color 
changes and they change. I should have brought a few of the other, the other skeins. Like they are, they're also very different. It's not like you're gonna get the same kind of like four things that'll repeat. It can be anything and it can be different lengths and everything. So you just end up with this like, ugh, it's just gonna be so pretty, I think. The, the sweater envy right now is like extreme. <laughs> like, it's so beautiful. It and is. your color, again, your color sense is just, is just perfection. Thank you. Very happy. Well, and it's funny you say that because I always go through every single time I go, I love it. And then I'm like, ah, oh, is it good? Is it good? And then it's like, no, I do. I do think it's good. So it's so pretty. So it's a bunch of browns and, um, and blues that just kind of keep changing. It's about to go into, I last night was trying to like knit a little further because it's about to go into this crazy blue. And I'm like, oh, I want that in here. But then I knit so fast that I'm messed up a little and now I'm gonna have to pull some of it out so I didn't get it done. But anyway, very exciting. Um, Amy's patterns are really, like she's, she's as popular as she is for a reason. Like they're really, they're great. And they're not, they're, they're not complicated. They're not like, you don't, they're not overly like telling you everything. Like they're like parsimonious, I guess. Like where it's just like efficient. Cool, that was a good word. <laughs> You know, they're, they're, it's like, she tells you what you need to know, not any more than that. And yeah, I'm just so excited for it. I mean, I think in color theory, you, technically orange and blue are good, are good complementary colors, yes. but like they're, they're, it's just so rich. I mean, it, it it's, it's pretty it's good so here, good. but it's such a rich combination and it somehow manages to be both fall and winter at the same time. I mean, when I look yes. at it, it's like such a, um, yeah, it is kind of has it because the icy maybe yes. blues and stuff. It's so oh, good. And like it's just gonna get other colors are just gonna keep coming. Like I mean, this is gonna be here, and then you're gonna get others. Like oh, there again. Uh, this is also why spin cycle is not. Um, it was like a splurge, and I it was something I bought on when it was like on sale somewhere. Like and it's and being up in Canada, it's not. It's especially hard to get it. Um, but I really can understand why people use this all the time because it's super fun. But change is just really, really fun. If there are any spinners out there, can you please let us know if it's possible for you, for us to... Because the whole thing about spin cycle is that it's supposed to um, like mimic hand spun, right? I think so, yes. Because like this, I'm like, where is my spinning wheel? I must make something, make like, something this. like this. I mean, it won't be as delicious. I mean, who knows, but... But you oh. know what's funny? It it really does change. Like I know it's not hand spun, but like the thickness of this changes quite a lot, mm -hmm. even through. So it it does feel like a hand spun. Like it feels more, uh, not as machine machine produced, right? Because you're just yeah. getting all these different things. Oh my god! It's so <laughs> good, guys. So we will see. I mean, I, uh, well, I I this is one I'm I'm having trouble putting down. So I might have that done by our next right. one. We shall see. Oh my gosh. It's so good. <laughs> so good. It's so good. So that's the Pressed Flowers Cardigan by Amy Christophers yeah. in Spin Cycle. 3.75 millimeters US 5s. US 5s. Yeah. And, I mean, uh, the other thing that I would say is um, like mosaic knitting is one of my favorite sort of color work treatments. It makes, and I think there's something about it for me, like from a sensory point of view. It's squishy. It's really squishy. One I think is probably the merino, mm -hmm. um, but also I think because it's garter. Yeah. Yes. Right? Absolutely. And I'm I've cast on a pressed flowers shawl, which I probably won't knit for a really long time. But I wanted to. There were like two colorways that I felt like I'm like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. These need to go together and they need to try them out. So I have this like swatch that's like yay big <laughs> where I basically just checked out the colors to make sure that it worked. But I think the shawl, I'm pretty sure you pearl in the shawl. Like I don't think the shawl is There's gartery. a little bit of pearling. In I had the to... flowers. There's pearling yeah, in the flowers. But the like flowers. your wrong side in the shawl, I think if I remember correctly, is, is um, knit. Or like, like pearl. you curl so that it like it's it's stock anatomy too. Maybe not. Well, you know it's funny it you out. say that because I knit all the way up to here, and didn't do it as garter because of it, like because it's knit back and forth. So when you're looking at the the the, um, chart. the chart where it has a dot, I just 
transferred in my head that that, that would be purling it yeah. coming back, but actually that would have meant knitting it coming back because you're, going the you're on the way. wrong side. Yeah. So I had to pull out this much and then redo it. Oh. I had a moment where I'm like, maybe I'll just leave it as it is, but then I'm like, no, just pull it out and go back. I feel like it's kind of genius though because the it having like the pearl, um, how do I say? Like it's, a it's like a board, um, like the border. It, yeah, it just like makes the. I feel like it makes a really beautiful. Like there's something about the textural component of it mm -hmm. that it's kind of like the the color work is like set in or back like a yes. waffle. Yes, absolutely. It's a waffle. It is like a waffle. It's like a waffle. It is, and also it's having it instead of having it a waffle in the world, <laughs> stock it at inside because you have the garter. You have it pop out a little bit though too, so right. you end up with like more of the color than when it was just in stockinette. Right. I'm into this. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah, so this is one of those moments, again, that I would just like, I love everything that I'm knitting, and I want to chuck it all to have this exact <laughs> same thing. <laughs> well, I have so much of this. Like, I just bought, it was on sale. The um, This was also on sale through a lovely um, store, Needles in the Hay, which is out in uh, Peterborough, I think lovely store owners they're, they're wonderful so anybody in canadian well actually i think they ship worldwide but they had um all of this they have a lot of brooklyn tweed and they had this all on a crazy sale i think last year and i just got a million of them because i was like i love it and it's so it's again it's so different the wool qualities right like i mean this and this are completely different feels and i love them both like they they are just You've always been really adventurous, though, in terms of like you like you knit with you love Newton and you've knit with a lot of yes. Newton, but you you've always been adventurous about like sort of trying different kinds of wool. Yeah, and I feel like I feel like I'm starting to like tiptoe out there. I think so too. Maybe. Totally. Maybe, but Newton will always Newton be will in always our be heart and like. be part of it. There will never be a time I'm not also knitting with Newton. But it's nice to have these other things. It's, so it's looking amazing on you. This is where I'm like, uh oh, Jackie's gonna put it on her toe, and I'm gonna be like, mm. <laughs> no, it looks really great. Oh, it looks, it's so. It's I feel. I actually feel like this color combination somehow manages to be warm and cool at the same time, and I think it would probably would work for so many skin tones. I think so too. Like I think, and it's, it's a neutral. So Even though it's got lots of color style. in it, it's a neutral. Yeah. Like the saddle is. It's like when you have a, a purse that's a like a saddle color purse yeah. and you can wear it with everything. Yeah. Yeah. It is per it is that perfect leather quality. Mm. Camel. Beautiful, rich. <sighs> you're going I feel like you're going through a brown. I am well, like, so, I've even like, like look at my project back to see if you like the yay. same colors. I think I'm just in this yeah. this phase. I just roll along with it, you know? Go with what we like. Nice. Oh, <sighs> I feel okay. like we've talked about a lot of things. What have you got next? Do you have, you said no whips, but dream knitting, we did some of that. Yeah. Oh, you have another finished object? I have a bunch of finished objects, but I think I'm just gonna show one. Okay, okay. This one you haven't seen. <gasps> oh yes, I peeped, but I haven't seen it yet but I've heard about this. This is what I thought you were gonna pull out when you were talking about this stuff before. It's all part of our theme. Okay, oh so my I'm God. Do something really sneaky. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, Jackie. So. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I need to hug you <laughs> right now because this just needs to be hugged. Look at how squishy. Okay, so this <gasps> is um, Newton and Yarn. This is the colorway Wagonham. Oh my God. Which is, yeah, your spirit like, color. It's my spirit color. Yeah. Um, oh and my I, God. So I've always, one of the things that I love about Mujin is like the heathered nature. And so I knit a lot of stockinette, A, because I like stockinette, B, because I like the fabric of stock, stockinette, and C, because I feel like stockinette shows off like a, the, color. the heathered. Mm -hmm. Like there are some colorways that look really good in, like if you knit it in garter, then it really shows it off yeah. if you knit it in whatever. So I've never done, this is Fisherman's Rib or Hack Brioche. I've never knit this stitch pattern before, but I saw this sweater, this particular sweater, and I was like, I want it. And it has half brioche. And this has been sitting in, like, this came out when? Earlier this year. And I've just, it's like my spirit color. It's like yeah. 
gray and beige it's and tan. Driftwood. It's it driftwood. Like, I think the, the inspiration dirt. photo was like the way home. Walk, the way home. Like the walk home. The walk home. And so to me, this season, like winter is about like homey, cozy comfort, irrespective of like what particular holiday you celebrate. Mm -hmm. I think there is, I feel like it's a time of year where we're invited to like be cozy and warm. Totally. And although, I don't know, what do you, what, what is the most nitty season? Cause I feel like mm. I see a lot of people are like, it's autumn, it's autumn. And for me, it really is winter. Yes. Um, anyway, so I was like, what is the winteriest, coziest, homiest thing that I can do? I'm going back to my spirit color. I'm going to yes. Newton and I'm going to try out this, um, oh. half fisherman's rib. So half fisherman's rib, I think there's two ways of knitting it. You can knit it um, so that every other row you're knitting into the row below. Oh, okay. And that's like when I looked at yes. Half Fisherman's Rib, you're knitting into the row below or something like yes. that. Um, and I just knew that that, that wasn't going to be enjoyable for me. I've tried other, I've knit other patterns that have like a dip stitch where you're going in underneath and like my hands again are just like, oh, what do you yeah. want me to do? And it's all like tense and unhappy. So I... The pattern is for, um, is written for half fisherman's rib, but I did it as half brioche where you are basically slipping. It's like slip stitches and yarn overs and mm. knits and pearls. Mm -hmm. Um, and it makes like, Switch if there was factor. a fabric <laughs> that Newton was born to become, I feel <laughs> like this is it. After yeah. like three years of Newton, <laughs> I'm like, it's stuck in it. That's its oh, happy place. Yeah, I was completely no. wrong. Yes. It's <laughs> a oh fisherman's God. rib. Um, so I, this, however, is not actually the flower. <laughs> I just really wanted to it's show funny because I know. And I, at first I was like, that's so beautiful. But then I was like, what's happening back here? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, so this is, oh, Jackie, it's perfection. The Agio sweater. Um, by Agio Nance. Oh, I have to make this. To me, this is like, th this is my perfect cozy, cozy winter, winter errands. It's like an apres ski. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, this it smells so woolly. Mm. <laughs> flew off the needles. Yes. It really did. Because of the cables, right? Because of the cables. Yes. Okay. So let me actually... So much. Um, I'm like, I like it worn the like forwards and back. Yeah, I do too. Right? Like, it's beautiful. Um, so it's knit, you knit the back, and then you pick up along this kind of shoulder seam. It's like a drop shoulder um, mm -hmm. construction. You knit the back, then you knit the front, then you, um, once you kind of come around, you start to knit it in the round and then you pick up the sleeves and you go down and then you add the collar afterwards mm -hmm. and it's a double folded collar. Um, this, is it Moorish? Is it potato chippy? This is one of those knits that has infinite momentum mm -hmm. and it's kind of hilarious because I feel like you, you influence me in ways that I don't realize I've been influenced because in actual fact, this is basically the same. It's not basically the same, but it's the same idea as the Fisherman's Raglan. Yes. Where you have basically a cable, like just a texture sort of panel. Mm -hmm. And then like really easy, don't have to back. think about um, back. And you just go mm -hmm. around and around and around. Um, and I think it's interesting in terms of thinking about like fit that this feels a little bit more modern to me mm -hmm. because it has this like blousy nature. Yes. yes. Um, but then you get what I think is a pretty classical looking yes. front. And I realize now that it's, it's the, same the same cables pattern. as the yeah. Empo. Yeah. I was, I, that's what I thought you were going to say, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also just want to talk about the fact that, you know, I, from what I understand about cables, it's like, the ideal yarn to knit cables in is something that has multiple plies, that's like round, that's bouncy yes. because you want it to the kind definition. of like pop. Mm -hmm. 
And I totally understand that. And that's why I sort of brought the snowy forest, which is that this is Newton and yarn. And here, like, I can see how the, you can see the cables, but they don't really like pop mm -hmm. as much as like, these really pop mm -hmm. or this really pops, right? Mm -hmm. But I actually have come to recognize that it's also about the cable and this honeycomb cable like, I mean, I'm really happy with the texture it gorgeous. that it offers. Yep. Like, this is unspun. Beautiful. And, and this you antler still cable is gorgeous. get, like, this is, I'm like, you can't, you can do anything with Newton. It just, yes. Really, I think the stitch definition is really quite good still. It is. It is. Um, it and is. it feels really lovely. I remember being in a store and trying on like a classic cream um Aran sweater that was cabled like front and back and arms and I remember thinking like this feels like armor yes like they're so kind of, like, much you can't move and they're not that like drapey cozy yes. thing that I love and so this sweater I feel like is the best of both worlds yes because you get this I think like I mean statement is maybe not is is like an over explanation but you get this delicious cable-y goodness yes but then the feel of the sweater is so cozy and drapey yes, and blousy. because you don't have a lot of cables happening under here no. right because that's I think that's where it happens is if you have lots of cables all here and you've got the cables on your arms that's when you put you it down and you're kind of like, like ah. you're in you know and I um sorry Nordland has a sweater called the Billy sweater yes. which I have forever loved um mm. that's an all over cable um but it's a honeycomb cable so it's like this cable mm -hmm. um all like a lot of it is that cable and i i think you were the one who sort of said to me that 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 cable creates a really like tight dense yes fabric and i'm like if it's I basically want all of my knits to be essentially shapeless because I just want all the drape. <laughs> For now, anyway. For now. Um, but I really enjoy no. that sort of like drapey um, look. Yes. And so this gave me drapey sweater. Totally. But cabled goodness. And what, like and how much, do you know obsessed. how much ease you have? It looks like you've got a lot of ease. So it's interesting. Okay, I did measure this out. Oh, right. We're a knitting podcast and we're supposed to talk about patterns. <laughs> oh, Okay. They all know we don't do that very so, well. So this in total was 488 grams of Newton held wow. double. The bus size is uh, 48 inches. Mm -hmm. I did not, um, I didn't make a gauge slot. <laughs> this is the extra small. The pattern gauge is based on the fisherman's rib or the mm -hmm. half brioche and the pattern gauge is 14 and after blocking my uh, 14 stitches per four four inches. inches um and after blocking mine came out at 13. so you know mm -hmm. i would say it's 10 inches of positive ease which maybe i could have gone down a little bit no, except i was i love it in the i i quite like the back mm-hmm um, I like the way that it drapes, so I'm pretty happy with it. And I like oversized, like, um, the, this, uh, Agio Knits is a mother and daughter designer. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to end up knitting their entire catalog because I feel like they... Yeah, well, and it fits you. It's funny because as, as soon as you put it on, I was like, I know this must be an Agio Knit because it's that, it's got the similar thing as your Cal sweater. My Geo sweater. Geo There's sweater. something about the way that, um, well, it's knit on a big needle. So I knit this on a US, hang on. I did the arms on a US nine and the body on a US eight. Really? I would have thought it was even bigger, but I, yeah, I'm a loose knitter. Right. And I wanted to have, I, I went on the smaller side because I wanted it to be sort of tight enough that the cables were going to pop. And so with yes. Newton, if you are knitting it on a really big needle, then it just doesn't right. create as much Because the definition is not quite. definition is not quite yeah. as good. Yeah. Um, but I think one thing also, just from what I know with Newton or like my experience with it is that part of also why this definition is so good is that it doesn't, this isn't one of the colorways that has a lot of 
colors variation within it. yeah like yeah. some other other ones have so many colors within it that that's where it starts to get very confusing like and you you lose the cable so this yeah. really has a beautiful I mean when I saw the colorway and I bought I bought of course the sweaters quantity and I was just like this needs to become something yes. like classic like it's like a yes. heritage sweater it's not gonna so... be like just trendy it's gonna be something you have forever yeah and I feel like this is it's just the perfect pattern for it for it and I'm so so happy with it it's gorgeous um, and I kind of am really um excited about the fact that technically I mean it does kind of look strange with the cable like on the back but technically yeah, it doesn't like I mean I just think it's unexpected mm -hmm. it, I somehow somehow I feel like because of the drape and the oversized like the back could be the front it could be it could be and then you have the, it's kind of this thing just coming over your shoulders like you did yeah. with the uh bouquet sweater. bouquet sweater um but i love this pattern so so much it was so fun to knit yeah you didn't want to put like i, did I didn't know what it, it i hadn't seen it but so i knew she would not this she... was the thing i was like i understand the thing with cables and so yes. here's the thing i would say about um choosing a cable project if you're new to cables or if you're like not sure about it i think this is such a good beginner cable sweater um at least for me it was super fun to try a stitch pattern that i hadn't tried before and yeah. doing half brioche i can understand why people love brioche so much because it there is oh, this the rhythm rhythmic of it. Yeah. thing and because you're like slipping and doing yarn overs it's kind of like easy knitting in the sense that you're not ha actually having to like pick like you don't have to throw you don't have to like pick yes. up it's you're just kind of like somehow i felt like somehow very magically all the needles were, all the stitches were going from like the left hand needle to the right hand needle. I'm like, oh, and we're there. And I don't understand yes. how I've gotten around. And then yes. these particular cables, which is similar to your MPO, like you're only crossing. Oh yeah. You're just uh, going two this or way three and going at a this time. way and this way and this way. Um, the other thing is one of the reasons why I, I couldn't get my head around cables because I couldn't figure out what's right leaning and what's left leaning. And when I've knit other cable patterns before, sometimes you're putting two stitches on the cable needle and then you're knitting three yes. and then you have to pick up two or and like, curling like one and is then two yeah. or one or am I purling or am I knitting? But these cables are like so easy to so memorize easy. and because they're reflected, mm -hmm. um, by the time I got here, I feel like I now can read my cable knitting yes. and I, it's like in my hands or it's like in my consciousness that I'm like, Oh, it's time to go left and Oh, it's time to go yes. right. Yes. So if you have wanted to have like a classic cabled Aran sweater, this is not a classic cabled Aran sweater, but it, it's close. It it's gives close. you like the feeling Just a different of it. shape at the top. Yeah, this is, this is it. Gorgeous. I already feel like I wanted it a second one because the other thing that happened with this is like the fit, the half brioche or the fish and thrift, it grew <sighs> so much. Like when I, <laughs> It was like this. I was like, oh, I'm going to do a bracelet. Uh, sleeve. <laughs> Almost. It grows. Um, I think it worked out well, but it's like, I would really like, like a cropped one. Oh, yeah. Well, that would be like the daydreamer. It's kind of similar yeah. to that. Uh, cropped. Point. And then I would probably take the sleeves a little bit closer. So the modifications mm. that I made were that I, I mean, okay, I wrote it down. So let me not lie to you. Um, I picked up wait. Yeah. I picked up 56 stitches for the arm in the pattern for my size I think it was closer to 80. Wow that would be really um, yeah, big. I don't and you know if you look at the pattern online other people have knit it and it looks beautiful but this is again like trusting that you yes. know you're your knitting own size and your own you're... size and yeah. i was like uh, i'm pretty sure that if i picked up what was in the pattern i would end up with like yeah. super gigantic sleeves which yeah. i think if you're a tall person mm -hmm. it might be okay yeah right but i picked up like way less and was like i'm just gonna trust them they're still huge which you need for, I feel like is needed for the drop shoulder silhouette. Yep. But I seriously am thinking about knitting a second one. Well, you can knit a second one and give me this one. <laughs> <laughs> I, do you want to try it on? I do want to try it on. Um, because I feel like it is a bit more of a modern silhouette, especially if you were to knit it a little bit cropped and to take the sleeves mm -hmm. a little bit tighter. Mm -hmm. 
um, it'd be really fun. I think it'd be really fun to do in like, you know, like a bright pink or like a, oh, yeah. a really bold, yes. more contemporary. Absolutely. Thing. But I do love it in this kind of. I think for my first like proper cable thing, it was the right, it was the right choice. You can try this on too if you want. <laughs> oh, and it's like for this, a cabled, this in an, an, an in a spun yarn would be so much heavier. I don't think I would enjoy it nearly as much. Oh, Jack. How does it look feel? At, see, look at, these are, uh, they're fine on my, on my arms. You knit it for me, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> it feels amazing. Oh, it feels amazing. Oh, yeah, I could just, it's like, it's just like wearing a big, oh, that looks gorgeous on you. Look how much longer. <laughs> Adorable. Like a tunic. Oh, Look how gorgeous. Oh my gosh. I love the turtle. So one of this the things so, that I think you, you about, need to make it this I long. I do need to make it. I oh. need to make it like this. Yes, you do. Um, oh my God. Okay. Sold. Yep. Sold. Um, I did think about making this a turtleneck. Oh, because you yes. pick it up. And I was like, do I make it a turtleneck? Do I make it a turtleneck? You need a turtleneck in your life there, Jackie. Maybe the second one needs, well, I'm going to knit this, but maybe the second version oh. I knit with a turtleneck. I love it. Oh, okay. it's so comfy, but it's so, isn't that interesting? Like we're, we wear the same size sweaters, right? Yeah. Like, but our bodies are so different, right? Like, so yeah. this is not, I don't feel like the sleeves look as big okay. on me. And certainly they're not like, <laughs> they actually are the right length. But, yeah. and, but I love, look how, like how long these are. It's reminding me of like a ballet sweater, it, like uh, beautiful. Look how lovely that looks. Okay, everybody, you have to knit both these sweaters. <laughs> these have to be done. Can everybody I say needs everything them. everything I need to say about that sweater? I think I'm so. I mean, everything else I knit to pattern. Um, I'm a little bit off gauge. I think it would be interesting, actually. Like, I wondered um, around gauge. Like, obviously, the half brioche is so much bigger than the cable. And so I wonder, like, I tend to be a loose knitter. Oh. I wonder how the fit would actually work out on somebody who wasn't as loose because mm -hmm. I expect I'm loose on stockinette so I bet you with a half brioche I'm like even looser yes right I also wonder in terms of if you were knitting it as as it was in the pattern that's like fisherman's rib where you're kind of going on pulling, pulling it underneath I think it might give a tighter fabric yeah in my head it would just lead to have more tension um so it might not be so blousy but I kind of like how it's blousy how it kind of like goes out I and like it back exactly in. as it oh is God, I love this I love it. Well, but look at the difference, right? So now I've got Nutidin back on and it like, and you've got the Canadian unspun. Like yeah. it's a different, it's a Very lighter different. feeling in a different way. It's just so, I mean, yeah. this is obviously double, held double two versus single, but. Yeah. Uh, um, okay, so I do wanna say one more thing because I actually need help from you guys to help me decide what to do because <laughs> This was actually, I mean, I love the sweater. I had had it saved in my queue forever and ever. And I was like, it's the festive season. It's time for cozy cables. Yeah. I need this. Um, but really what this was, was an audition for the actual cable sweater that I really want. I want this one too. Which is oh, also That my one is knits. what I need. And I want this one. Is this our next Cal? <laughs> like... <laughs> Oh my God. Like it is. I want that so much. Oh, so that's the Euros, Euros, E-U-R-U-S sweater. Let me see if it's oh. in like, oh. I feel like this is not. Everyone has to just well. go look just this one up. Please go look this one up. Let is it knit I can find flat so or is it in the round? it's knit flat. I love flat too. It's knit flat and it also is knit across like you're knitting it you knit the arm yes it looks like your you... geol in some ways that top. yes um so i was like it so that one is um full cables front and back yep and you're already gonna change it no because no. i was thinking about like the reason why i knit this first is because it's the same cable pattern it's just turned 
this way, it yes. runs this way. Oh yes, of course. And what I wasn't sure about is, am I going to like it? Um, am I gonna like the feeling of like dense cables all the way through a sweater? So the sample was knit in a blown yarn. I think it's oh, knit in, like drops air or something. Something similar. It's like, um, oh no, it's not. I lied. Okay. I was like, this That's particular a lot of pattern was knit in a blown yarn. Which is why oh, I felt safe enough trying to okay. knit a cabled sweater and unspun because mm -hmm. I was like, they knitted in a blown yarn. I'm, I, I think Newton can do this. I know Newton can do this, so I'm, I'm okay. But the other one is knit, uh, is not knit in a blown yarn, but it's knit in a high. Um, it's. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's a big gauge, but I didn't know if I was gonna like the feeling of like cables all the way across mm -hmm. if it was going to be like too dense and if I was going to feel tight knit and I I don't on the basis of knowing what that feels like in the front but here's my dilemma the color that I really want to knit that next cable oh, sweater in yes. is this one <laughs> which is um omg omg omge sorry um because I think it's, it's so such beautiful. a good blue black and I just oh. it's so gorgeous this is another one that I bought in the sweaters quantity and I'm like this is gonna be like a legacy sweater yes I was thinking about knitting this in this um but because it's so dark I'm worried that the cables aren't gonna come out that's my fear for you um so then there's a part of me that just goes do I just do a classic white I, so when I did, I did a class with Allison and I'm blanking on her name when I made uh, the Balin cardigan by Emily Green. Thank you, Emily Green, which is a big color work, or not color work, cabled monstrosity, fabulous. It's I'm gonna amazing. have to, I have to wear this one, maybe next episode next I'll episode. make sure that I wear it. Um, but so I, I took a class to do that and it was all online. And I remember some people, did it in dark like and we were talking about like do you do cables in dark and um allison said you know it's funny dykhausen dykhausen i think um she said what's funny about the dark colors is that it doesn't come up online like on pictures and stuff you right. won't be able to see it but in actual person like when you're seeing it in person you will be able to see it a lot better so i mean it's worth you could try it i mean there's just so much like the cable is just so beautiful it's so beautiful like yeah, like it's in her actual her. fact. If I had a sweater's quantity of Vernaden, I would knit it in Vernaden because this particular. Um, I love that colorway. So I love much. this teal. I think that again, it's like classic, but like a little bit different, which is kind of nice. Yep. Um, and also the other thing that I know about it is that it's quite drapey. Yes. yes. Because I think to have that oversized cable front and back, I think it's important that the yarn is not like I actually wouldn't choose. A, a like round, you know round three ply like bouncy because Worsted. I don't think it's or, gonna yeah. give you that sort of like oversized drape. So interesting. What do you think? How? What should she do? What do I? I mean, I would say you should start and try with the because look at look at how excited you are. You know, like you know you want to try this, and so it should be tried. Yeah. I can't wait to knit this color too. This is one of my like favorite. Oh God, it's just so beautiful. It's, it's actually, to me, it's the perfect midnight blue. It is. It is the perfect midnight blue. Yeah. And so we're cool. going into winter solstice and I feel like this, like Aww. the yarn that's talking to me about wanting to be cast on next is this one. Yes. But the pattern that's talking to me that wants to be cast on next is that I'm, I'm in a cable mood. You're in a cable it's mood. the time for cables. Mm -hmm. um, and there's something about this that I think is like, it's I, like it's going to be a perfect Christmas sweater. Yes. I mean, you can, you will not go wrong if you go. However, but it could. I mean, cables are like as you, you made this in like what two three weeks? weeks? Three weeks? Three weeks? And this was like I'm not a monogamous knitter. You're a monogamous <laughs> knitter, but I could not put this down. I was just like I want to yeah. do nothing but oh, knit so that. Enjoyable. And the only and the only breaks that I took were for this another cable <laughs> and for this and another cable because I wasn't done with this. Um, and because I wanted to try this delicious new yarn, Romney. It is amazing. Shiny, shiny, delicious Romney. I've got a bunch of that. That one is sitting there too. I, I 
think I know what I'm gonna make now, but I'm not. Oh, it's just beautiful. There's so many things to knit. So many things to knit. God. So. Oof. I think there's more stuff, but there's I think always there's probably. Oh my God. I know. I'm like. Two hours and twenty. I hope YouTube doesn't have a limit. <laughs> I mean. I am. Um, when you said it was gonna be about two hours, I'm like. I think it's not that it ends up about two hours. It's that we keep getting longer. I'm like so. <laughs> I was like, last was like two hours and seven minutes. I'm like, mm, we'll see. Two hours, 24 minutes. minutes. One of these days, it'll just be a daily, like a <laughs> complete day long thing where it's like, yeah, let's check in with, it takes us all the time to watch the episode where they're already podcasting again by the time you get through. Well, anyway. I hope that you had some comfort and some sort of knitting inspiration hanging out with, with us. We can't hear, we can't wait. I can't wait to sort of have the pen to, get the comments and yes. sort of um, in whatever way, whether you're reaching out to us or just being inspired that we get to be video pen pals. Yes. Um, we love seeing your stuff, like whether, yeah, it's on Instagram, you're tagging us like, or DMing or the comments in the, in the YouTube. It's, it's so, it's so heartwarming. It's exactly, I love this pen pal idea because every time there's a new comment, I'm just like absolutely thrilled. It just makes me so happy. And there's been such great suggestions, like going and doing some like fiber, like going around Ontario to like some mills. I'm like, brilliant. Yes. Yeah. We'll do all of this stuff, but like we could keep talking. So, um, I think Oh, and then our, sorry, the cow. Oh yeah. Do we want to talk? Well, the cow, remember, <laughs> I am going to make, so I've already decided what I'm going to do now for my cow, I think. Okay. Because I talked about, um, sorry. We have to explain the cal again. So we have this knit along. We were we have been running with Loretta and Natalia the Knit My Way Home podcast, um, the inspired by Ellen knit along. If you check out the hashtag um, on Instagram, you'll see. But essentially, it's a free for all knit along where you're invited to knit something using a particular motif, which is available in a book and online. And all of the information is down in the description box. And if you've been here for a while, you're like <gasps> again no. the cal. However, <laughs> keep going. So I, I mean, I did make a hat, but I, I started before the cowl. I cast on some sleeves and then I have not picked them up yet because I keep getting distracted by all these other beautiful knits that I just can't stop myself. But I have decided I'm going to finish the sleeves and I'm going to make a cardigan. I'm going to steak it. <gasps> fun. And I've never steaked before and I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. It's going to be fine. So anyway, that's the plan for that. Um, but we were talking about prizes. Yes. Did we want to say, yeah. um, we, we are still figuring them all out, but we're going to... So the to... Inspired by Ellen Knit Along um, runs until January 31st uh, of 2023. And um, you don't need to knit a sweater. You can knit anything yep. to participate in the Knit Along. Anything that has a motif in it um, would qualify you for uh, winning a prize, which we've now decided on. Yes. Which is as so, sweaters... You go ahead. No, you go. You say it and I'll hold it. <laughs> so um, we are going to give away a sweater's quantity of um, Newton in, um, in this beautiful, rich, golden brown, delicious color called Lucra. Oh. And so what, um, in order to mm. enter the giveaway part, you know, if you would like to um, enter for the prize for the Inspired by Ellen Knit Along Cal. Um, there are two ways. One is that you use the hashtag Inspired by Ellen K-L-F-O on Instagram. Um, so for those of you who have already finished your projects and already posted, if you just go and like edit the comments right. and like add um, F-O to the end of Inspired by Ellen K-L, then that will um, enter you into the giveaway. For people who are not on Instagram, um, what we're going to offer is we're also going to open a thread in our Ravelry group mm -hmm. um, that says inspired by Ellen K L finished objects. And if you're not on social media, um, you're not using Instagram, then I'll invite you to drop um, a picture of your finished object um, there. And what we'll do is we'll pool both of those together into like one giant pool and then do a random number generator to, um, to find the winner. Find the winner which we'll be doing in like February. Yes. But we wanted to let you know in case that gives you a little bit of inspiration to- um, Still a month and a half, yeah. you, got, you can do loads of things by then. Yeah, 
Um, and we're really excited to be able to uh, give away parts of our stash to you um, in a color that to me is just so mm -hmm. earthy and, you know, in a way, I feel like this color really represents what Newtonin is about. It's mm -hmm. a blend that um, is quite, if you've not worked with Newtonin before, it's a quite, it's, it's a more stable blend. Um, and it, again, like just full of life. Full of dynamic life. Love so, yeah. Should we end before it goes to oh my gosh, two okay. hours and 30 minutes? So we'll be back at the beginning um, yes. of the year. And so I'm um, sending our warm wishes to you wherever you are. I'm hoping that whatever this season means to you, um, that you will continue to find little teeny tiny pockets and moments of comfort and joy and wonder and cozy and warmth. Um, whether that's with your stitches, whether that's with loved ones, whether that's outside um, taking a breath of fresh air or like whether you're in the snow like we are, or whether you're um, breathing in the first breath of spring and summer. We just wish you all the best for this season and we're so grateful for um, getting to share our craft and our knitting uh, with you and to continue to be inspired by you. You're so good at that. What a beautiful way to say it. I've got ditto. Everything she said. <laughs> Thank you all. We'll see you in 2023. 2023! <laughs>